Hola amigos, vamos a pintar una Catrina muy belleza y bonita. Mira con los flores, mira ese cara. Mira, hoy. Oh, yeah, we're gonna have so much fun. Now I'm not gonna lie, this painting, it took a little while, okay? It was like three hours, but wow, right? I know, she's totally cool. And like, I didn't mean for the painting to look kind of like me. But hey, does that not? I don't know. <laughs> We're gonna have fun. Honestly, really, she's. I'm gonna walk you through step by step. It's it's. Trust me, it'll be easy. You you can do this because if I can do this and I did it, I totally did it. I know that you're gonna be able to do it. Um, the flowers are impressionistic style, so they're kind of just black with paint, and then they come out looking awesome. The face is just a lot of blending, honestly. So if you have ever tried to put on makeup and blend and contour and stuff, this is going to be easy peasy and happen just like that for you. Uh, if not, don't worry. I'm going to show you the science and how I did what I did and why. And then, you know, I made it kind of simple, basic and easy, very simple in the background. So if you break it down, step by step and really take a moment to think about what you're doing and all the little ideas then really this is this easy um if you haven't painted in like a million years this might not be a good one to start off with but hey if you don't push yourself you're never gonna get better honestly i mean i still think every single time that i paint a katrina they're getting better so go ahead push yourself and it's going to be super awesome. And I'm really super excited to see how it's, yours is going to turn out. I'm sure it's probably going to be better than mine. Because, yeah, I know you're a good painter. I've seen your stuff. And I know you can do this. So let's go ahead and let's go forward. The sketch for this seems very difficult. But when we break it down into shapes and sizes of shapes, it's actually quite simple. I have already pre-sketched out all the design on my canvas. However, if you notice my sketch, it doesn't look perfect and beautiful like it's ready to frame. That's because I only did the bare minimum to give me an idea as to where I want to put the different places and things on my painting. So I'm going to go ahead and walk you through some areas and how to paint this painting. Now I'm going to use a brush to show and emphasize ideas and places but go ahead and if you feel more comfortable use a pencil now the first thing that i did when i sketched this out was i created an oval now the oval was rounded where the forehead is and it kind of comes to a point so it's like an egg and the pointy part of the egg is the chin so go ahead and i would like you to draw an oval this is so we know where the head's going to go, with the pointy part where the chin is. I, am, I did sketch the face, but first let's worry about the big anatomy parts before we go into all the little details. After you draw the oval of where the face goes, let's go ahead and do a neck. Now the neck is a square, it's a square rectangle right here. Just make a square so the pointy... So the egg is going to be round, it's going to be pointy at the chin, and then we're going to do a rectangle where the neck is. And then from there, we are going to come slightly around to the shoulders or right here. So we need the oval, the point of the oval, we need a square for the neck, and then we want a line going right and a line going left, and that's going to be our shoulders. Once you have that, let's work on some other details. Now, I'm going to use a paintbrush so you can start seeing where these details are popping up. Now, the eyes are going to be right here in the center. So I have an oval right here that's pointing down. Well, I'm cutting my oval in half. And then I'm also going to do two thirds up and I have where my eyes go. So what I have done is I have sketched out two eyes. Now I'm going to show you here around the eyes where the eye socket is, is black. So I'm going to go ahead 
and draw a circle. I recommend that you do the same thing. See how this is one eye? And it's just a circle. Now this is a painting of a woman who is alive and she has makeup on to look like a skeleton. So I have to keep that in mind when I'm painting this so I don't start getting a cartoon look. It's gonna take a minute to establish and be beautiful, but we kinda are gonna do this in layers. So I have my one circle where I have one eye. I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to do this one kind of like a circle. However, over here on the left side of the circle, I am going to give some personality because I want my head to be turned just a little bit. So see, I have a circle. However, it's been kind of dented right here. And by doing this and not having two perfect circles, my face will appear to have a little bit of a... Um, a look off to the side and the face won't be straight on which I find to be a little more visually stimulating and more beautiful uh, to have a little bit more of a she's looking somewhere she's got a personality to her so I'm gonna go ahead and fill in my eye now I am going to leave the center part of my eye white and that's gonna be when I do my eye it's going to be so that I can have a little area in the whites of the eyes and do the middle part of the eye, the iris. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to fill it in, but I'm going to leave like a really squished uh, oval in the middle of the black area. Do you see that? So I have a circle with an oval in it, and then I have another circle that got squished on the side that also has an oval in it at the same time. Now that's the inside of my eyes. Now I want to do the mouth. I want to consider and think this woman is wearing makeup. So she still is going to have cheekbones and whatnot, but we're going to use makeup to make her look like a skeleton. So how I'm going to do that is underneath, directly underneath the middle section of this eye, I am going to create another circle. Okay, I know it's counterintuitive in how we would think that faces are, but trust me, it's, it's gonna work out. Just go with it, and the end result, I promise, is gonna be super, super cool. I am using a tiny little skinny Filbert Bright brush. I really prefer and enjoy using these brushes. I'm going to bring up the line. Her ear would be about here. Now it's covered with a leaf, so I'm not going to need to do the ear, but I want to bring up a little bit of a line to emphasize the skull and the side of the mouth. Now I want to do the other thing on the other side of the mouth. However, I am going to keep in mind that I have the curvature of the face right here, and it comes down and around. However, do you notice how they're not even on both sides? Everything that is on the left, the, the, for she's facing us, so we'll say this is the left side, this is the right side. Everything on the left side of the face is a little bit smaller than this one. The left is smaller than that one. And remember, it's dented here. It's a little round, and we want to keep the curvature of the face going. So let's do that. And then... I'm going to go ahead and make a line and adjoin both of these. Now this is where the teeth are, so I'm going to be very careful. I'm going to take a moment and try to make it appear as though these teeth are individuals and a little jagged. The more I make them jagged, the scarier this face is going to look. So I'm going to give my teeth personality. And they can be a little crooked because, you know, that's normal. And if you want to do hyphened reality and make her look extra perfect, that's awesome too. But if you do give her a little bit of human quality and a little unperfection in her face, then she can come across being really beautiful and awesome and unique and real. For example, a, a rose. Roses 
if you stare at them, are actually quite ugly and unsymmetrical because they're not perfect round and perfect bumps and perfect layers everywhere. Every little petal has its own personality. I like to think of teeth like that. Each tooth has its own personality. I'm going to make hers a little jagged. They can be a tiny bit crooked and it'll make it look more realistic and less cartoony and Disney quality. I'm not going for Disney here. So this is great. We're going to come back and do more, but I kind of want to let it dry before we go back into white paint. Um, I will over here. I want to make a little crack at the bottom of her eye, a little tiny line. And what this does is it's saying that there's a crack in the skull, that the skull has been broken. This, this girl's been through a little bit. It's got a little bit of a crooked face. I'm going to do the same with the forehead. Now, I'm going to go ahead and look at these lines here. They come to the nose, they veer out, and then they come back in. So, I'm going to do that here. Coming out of the nose... and then coming back and around. It's almost like if I was trying to make the bottom of a heart. But like the bottom part of the heart and the top part of the heart are not connected. See that? It's almost as if they want to connect in the middle and come out and around and come to a point, but I don't connect them there and I don't connect them there, but there are the two sides of the heart. Now we're going to come over here and make another little, is this one looks like a comma and it's going to come straight down. This just gives emphasis and curves to her forehead. Now remember she is alive and she's wearing makeup. So, this is makeup that she has put on herself to look like a skeleton. So if it's not super perfect, that's okay. All that would suggest is that she did not have good makeup on. It was looking all super perfect and awesome. She does it. She is trying to look dead. So if it's not perfect, it's okay. It'll turn out even cooler. So I have those lines. I have the crack right here. I have the forehead. So now I'm going to allow that to dry. I will revisit it, but I'm going to come back to the neck. Now right here, we have the neck is a rectangle. Now it's a rectangle that comes down. Remember, she's wearing makeup. So in real life, she would have flesh here and we wouldn't really see these bones. However, she's done hyphened reality. So she's wearing white makeup here on her neck and a little bit onto her chest. However, we can see by the way that the shirt is sitting that she's kind of taken these bones and made them a little higher than they would be. This really should be a little bit lower because her boobs would be down here in this area. So she's hypening the reality, which is okay. We're painting what we see. So I'm going to go ahead to make it a little easy on myself and I'm going to make a line right here and I'm going to make another line right here. Now do you see how I've connected that? These lines are going to go, I'm not going to do it right now, but this line should go all the way out here and this line should go all the way out there because those are her shoulders. This area right here is the pretty awesome part of her shirt. So she still has flesh over here. So we want two straight lines. Now, because she is wearing makeup, I'm going to go ahead and paint around where I see the bones. So I want a bone. I want a bone to be here. So I'm going to do a straight line across and I'm going to do it around. And this is going to be around one of the bones that she has painted onto her neck. So one bone. Then I'm going to do another bone. And 
And then she has the breastplate. The breastplate technically should be down here, but she has done makeup to make it higher. So it's almost a triangle with the base of the triangle, the flattest area of the triangle up front. So I'm gonna go around in a circle and it's not gonna be a very sharp triangle. It's very rounded edges. I'm just gonna go ahead and come around and the point, one of the points of the triangle comes down and she's got a flat edge. So now let's make some more bones. Now we have two collar bones, which really, if she wasn't wearing makeup, should be here where my thumb is, my pinky, and then another one here. However, for the makeup, we're gonna do a circle here. And then we're going to do, I'm gonna give personality. If I do a, this, this right side, if I make this right side appear the same as on the left side, what's gonna happen is it's gonna be way too symmetrical. It's gonna start looking cartoony and Disney. And at this moment, it's not really an, a look that I'm trying to go for. I'm not trying, I don't want Disney right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm coming up here a little bit. And I made a triangle. I want it to be long. So notice how this one is long and then this one is long as well. All my bones, I want them to be long. Now that we have that, let's make another tinier uh, bone here. Now we're starting, this should be mimicking, again, should be down here. So we're like kind of over the breastplate right now, like the bottom part of where the heart would be. So the bone is gonna, the bones do get a little bit smaller there. So I did a small one. I'm gonna do another little small one. Now each one of my, my little circles here is its own unique little personality. It's got its own little guy thing going on and it's it's unique and it is what it is and they don't all have to be perfect and symmetrical. Make each one in this, put them in the same basic area. However, make each bone be its own unique individual. I'm gonna go ahead and do a tiny little triangle right here. And remember, I want this bones to be long because this is the bottom part of the, ooh, Oh my goodness, what do they call this one? The, I wanna say clavicle? I don't think that's right, that's wrong, isn't it? <gasps> oh, I don't know anatomy that well. Um, the collarbone, yes, these are the collarbones. So there's the top bone and here's the bottom bone. Likewise, I wanna do that over here. Now this one, I don't want to be a triangle because I got a triangle here and I got a triangle there and I'm trying to make these individuals. So he is not going to be a triangle. Yes, that was looking really nice. I like that. I didn't attach on this, oops, whoops, oh no. I didn't attach the, cause I'm gonna come with the sh uh, colors and stuff and, and paint over it. I haven't decided what color I want yet but I'm gonna leave it open just in case for the future. So I didn't close these triangles and I didn't really close that one either. Now, I do wanna make this vertebrae for her spine is gonna continue down. So I'm gonna make another little guy. Now her shirt is right here. And so I'm gonna let it be. So it's an oval, but I'm not gonna show the bottom of the oval because it's more for the imagination. Makes my brain think a little, you know? Now we want to do another bone right here. Now this bone is going to over here going to represent the um, one of the um, oh geez the chest bones uh, the um, ribs. This is one of the top ribs. Now I'm not going to do one on the right side. The reason why is so I can break it up a little bit because it's just barely sticking out where we can see it and she's kind of turned. I did make it so her face is turned a little bit. So therefore the rest of her body would be turned a little bit as well, kind of at an angle. So now that I have my bones the way I like it, there is one more bone, but I'm not gonna do that one in black right now. I will come back to it. So I'm gonna take a quick moment 
and I am going to just color in all these areas that are on the outside of those circles that I made. Since it's only a small little area that I'm painting, I am going to use my small bright filbert brush. Now the reason why this brush is called a bright is because the bristles are very tightly compact, compacted where they are. They're tight, there's a whole bunch of them and they're stuck together and there's like more bristles in a small area. So that's why it's called a bright. Now the reason it's called a filbert is because it is not a square brush and it is not a round brush. It is kind of in the middle. Like it got cut, the fibers got cut in a way that they're not making a straight line across and they're not really making, they're not really rounded. So that is why it's called, a, oh, uh, that's why it's called a filbert. Now I'm gonna continue. I accidentally got some black, but that's okay. We can fix that later. I'm just going to continue to paint all the area in which she has applied makeup over her skin so that the bones will really be showing through. Now if you get little brush marks, like if you're using a cheaper quality black paint, you're going to see a lot of little brush marks happen. And I find the brush marks make painting super awesome. So on purpose, I want brush marks. Now, if you are not, if you don't like that type and you are more into classical design and you want more of a realism effect that you're trying to do, make it look like the photograph, then I would recommend blend, 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 and don't show any brush marks because the more you do that, the less it's going to look like a painting and more like a photograph. Um, I personally am trying on purpose to allow mine to look like a painting. I don't want mine to look like the photograph. I do want it to look like the photograph in that this is the model and I'm trying to paint what I see but at the same time I'm kind of want to go off into my own world and create what I think I see and by doing that and keeping that mindset that is called impressionism I am uh, really big into impressionism I like it I think it's cool I like the freedom that it gives that I don't have to be super perfect with this painting now I do know that this is among one of my harder of my painting classes, um, but I do think that a beginner can do it if you keep the mindset of not stressing out and just letting it happen and letting it be what it is. Um, that's the try the mindset. I'm not trying to freak out about every little detail. I'm just kind of letting it happen, and what it looks like is what it looks like, and I'm gonna be happy. And so have that mindset. And when you do that, you're painting, you're going to be able to be freer while you're painting. And it's going to show in your work that you were courageous enough to make risks. And the more risks that you take, the cooler your painting can look if you don't take those risks. And this is how we learn. This is how I learned how to paint was just by letting it happen and let it go. So don't stress out. Have a good time. Enjoy yourself because I know that I'm enjoying myself and I'm having a really great time hanging out today. And hanging out with you too. I mean, yeah, that's, that's cool too. That's special. Okay, so I've got where she has put makeup. Let's see, I can continue from here with the black. Now there's this little ribbon here. That's going to be the very last thing that I do because it's going to overlap. So let's see. I was thinking, in the original photograph of the lady, she has a black background and she also has a black shirt. Now, I'm feeling that it's too, totally cool and I do want to stay true to the, paint, the photograph and what I see. But I also feel that I should take some artistic license a little bit because if I do black for the background, and then I also do black for her shirt. It's just going to blend in so much. And I'm going to have to work a lot in tones and in value. And I kind of don't want to do that with this one. I'm not really feeling the vibe at this one. So because of that, I'm going to make things a little easier on myself. And I'm just going to go ahead and make her background blue. So it's like the night sky. And then I'll make her uh, shirt or the, her shirt black which I think by doing that will also make her look more skeleton-y. Now, she is wearing a Mexican-type blouse, a really cool one from the, the, the 
the, I want to say the Indians, the native tribes, the Aztecs and the Mayans and the, their descendants, the descendants of the descendants for like a thousand years. And they make these awesome, cool shirts. I have a million of them I wear all the time. I, I have Mexican ancestry. My mom is from Mexico. Um, I lived there for like half of my life. So, um, yeah, I love them. They're cool outfits. And I'm having a total and complete brain fart on the name of the technique, of the idea. It makes me feel really bad. <laughs> Shouldn't forget that kind of stuff. But anyways, that's the kind of shirt that she's wearing. Now, if you want to change her shirt to make it simpler, you can. She has a lot of design and needlework going on here, which are totally cool. Yeah, I mean, some of the shirts can, I mean, total artistry. But anyways, I'm going to leave that, let that go. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to make a line here. And I'm going to follow her shoulder over. And I do like to paint the sides of paintings. That's something that I do. You don't have to do that on yours if you don't want to. But I feel that if you paint the side that um, the that it just makes the piece feel more finished. And uh, I don't really, I'm not going to have to really need to frame it because it's going to look really cool. So I'm going to go ahead from the shoulder blade all the way down. I'm going to paint black. There we go. So now I'm going to follow it in and I'm going to make this line. It's going to be like wavy. Try not to make this line here straight. Make it have personality to the way that this line is happening. Like, where would her shirt be? And think about, because, yeah, we painted these because she did makeup. However, her bone structure, this would be here. So this bump would be where she would have the actual, um, oh, my goodness, the, the bones would actually be over here. So it would make, like, a little bit of a bump. Now, typically, these shirts, um, they're, like, I like the Irish version of the, the cabinet shirt. They're a lot thicker. Um, cotton. Uh, they're like, they're, they're thicker, they're thicker knitted shirts. And so they're not really thin. So they don't really show off like, it's not like you're wearing nylon that would show off every little curve. Um, I do feel that painting clothing can be a little bit harder than painting a nude solely in that you need to think okay well what's underneath of it and why would that clothing be bent in the way that it's bent um i did when i was at the university studying art i took a few anatomy classes which were like a million and a half years ago and i don't remember a thing i learned however even though i can't remember the name of everything just by going through the anatomy class, I still see it in my mind. I still see, okay, well, this is the bone structure of the human anatomy, and this is how it goes. And I feel that that has made me a little bit of a better artist, that I have the basic idea of really how is it going. I mean, and we've all seen humans. I mean, we've seen ourselves in the mirror naked, right? But there's something between, there's a difference between seeing and looking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we see it. But when was the time to last time we actually stared and took a moment and really thought about what we were looking at? Um, I recommend doing that. Like when you are painting, uh, when you are painting a person, take a moment and like you know, look at it. Look at yourself in the mirror. Look at what who you're painting. Just take a moment to stare and like really think. Okay, well. Look at how this is and look at how that is and and like you know take a minute like for example right now november is coming here shortly and i have spent this past two weeks just purposely focusing on staring at trees thinking about what colors i see beyond just the the yellow and green and like brown like i'm actually trying to think okay well what hue within the yellow family am I looking at and exactly how are the branches are so before I painted this painting I took a minute I thought about you know thought about it where is it about the makeup how it would go I recommend doing that 
That's my teachers. They told they told me when I was at school at the university, they told me do that. So yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna make that other line for the shoulder. And I'm gonna make her come down. Now I'm gonna make, remember that line that I told you about? Make it a little crooked and wavy. Okay, try to mimic the other side, but don't mimic it too much. I want the right side of my painting to appear and look different than the left side of my painting. Yeah. I'm choosing to make her a little bit wider. I do think that the background should come down a little bit. But I'm okay. I'm going to simplify this painting a little bit and not have to do a blue strip down here. So I'm going to make it easy on myself and just go the whole way. Now, if you feel that if you went the whole way to the side of the canvas by the size of how you did the head compared to how you're doing the shoulders, don't go all the way. Only go to where you think it would be natural and then go straight down. I'm kind of right on that cusp right there if I can make it either or a decision. Yeah, she's just going to have really big shoulders. She's going to be a tough lady. I'm going to make sure that I do the sides. There we go. So I'm feeling it in. Now I am going to add other colors. This is going to be a very colorful piece. Um, but I figure while I've got the black out and you know, so it's not drying on my palette. I also, when I paint, I, I am working with thick body acrylic paints uh, and they dry really quickly. And so one way to combat them drying super quickly is just to go ahead and just take the paint out a little bit at a time as you need it. Um, I find that that helps me a lot with what I'm doing to keep the paint so it's like still moist and wet and flowy. You can add water. At this point, if you feel that your paint is sticky and it's drying super quick, like if you're in a really hot, a hot environment that's very dry, um, like if you live in the desert, you might want to consider maybe adding some water. There are different types of gessos that you can add to mix into your paint. I typically don't because that's like more money that you'd have to spend to do stuff and I'm trying not to do that. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm looking at her shirt and I'm thinking what can I do next. Now, I... I think I'm going to go back on my original intentions to do, I'm still going to keep this very colorful, but I'm going to go ahead and do like a wishbone right here and let it go out a little bit. And then I'm going to come back with some stitching. I'm going to make some really cool stitching. So I'm going to let this come out. I just got to keep in my brain though and remember, like I have to, Remember, like, we'll think where this line will be so that way when I do the stitching, I can get it in the right spot. Now, one way that can help me is by making sure that my brush strokes right here for this wishbone are, uh, are straight up and down and a little curvy. So then when it dries and I go back, I can kind of see my line and where I put it to make those stitch marks. Okay, so this is one area of the wishbone, and it's going to mimic on the other side as well. Now this is, I have sketched out the design, I have sketched out the design of her, let me make sure I'm still on camera here. I sketched out the design of the, the string that ties, but that's okay. I, I can, I'm always going to, I can paint that in later. I'm going to make the top of the wishbone and then I'm going to go to the other side and do the same exact thing. 
keeping in mind of my brush strokes and trying to keep them even and so that they go straight up and down and a little bit curvy and then when it dries I can see where that stitch line is going to go. Now the more intricate you make it with the stitches the cooler it's going to look and it'll really be a nice balance for the intricacy of the flowers that we're going to paint. Now the flowers, there are so many ways to do the flowers. I'm going to show you the very simple, easy ways to do it that are still going to be super cool and awesome and look amazing. So if your flowers are going to be very simple and in, in design, then I would recommend making your stitches also very simple in design as well. There we go. See how it's an upside down wishbone? There we go. I like that. I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to go ahead and paint this side while I'm here so I don't have to do it later. All right, it's looking great. I'm gonna give that a minute to dry before I go start adding all this extra super cool stuff. So while we're waiting that for that to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and work on the background. Now, if you're not as, as fast and you need to catch up, don't worry, this video is not going or anywhere. It's gonna be around for a while, so you have plenty of time. When I work on the background, I'm going to make sure that I don't uh, I don't touch areas of the black because I don't want my the black to get pulled in to the background. Now that could be a cool look that uh, just for this painting is not the one the look that I'm choosing to go with at the moment. So I'm adding a little bit of just blue. Now, if you would like to change the background, that's totally cool. You can make the background whatever color, like maybe a red would look cool. Now, I haven't shown you how to do the flowers yet. We're going to work on the head here. What I did originally was I made my oval for the egg shaped of the head. And now, she, in my mind, she has a bun in the back of her hair and then she has attached a bunch of flowers all over it. So almost like it's wrapping the head. So right now you can go ahead and draw out the flowers if you want to, or we can make this way super simple and easier by not doing that. So with a pencil or just, you know, be careful when you're painting around, just make a little, like an upside down U, like where her head would be if she was wearing like a helmet. So just a big blob and don't paint anywhere where you would like to put a flower. So you remember the, how like people joke about the concept of the helmet head and like the design, the, the hairstyle of helmet hair? Yeah, that's kind of this. So if you look at it, Minusing her face and taking that out, we're looking at an upside down U. So this upside down U, make a, draw a little area, keep it in mind where you're not going to. Now I am choosing not to have the flowers come down like it's hair. So I will be painting right here and I will be painting right here. So I'm gonna go ahead just really quickly for a short period of time. And to make things easier on myself so I'm not smearing black all over my canvas, I am going to flip my canvas. I recommend that you do the same thing from time to time. I feel that it really helps by doing that. So right here, I'll make sure I'm still in view of the camera so you can still see me. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and we'll work I'm gonna paint the sides first, just cause get a nice coat. Now, when I paint, I like to have all them brush strokes. So this is a time where I'm going to be very particular with how I'm painting and allow those brush strokes to just kind of come naturally. And just, I'm 
pushing my brush in all different directions, all different sides. I'm kind of caking on the paint a little bit. I am using thick potty paint, so I don't need to do that a lot. Uh, the thinner, uh, if you're not using thinner, if you use thin body paints and not thick body paints, basically what it is, is typically in the art store, they tend to be the cheaper quality paints that are not as expensive. And they have a lot of, they have a lot of uh, water added to them. It's the same basic idea like when we think of like um, deter detergents for clothing and then in the ads they say about adding it the water and you're paying for the water kind of deal that they're adding to the, they're adding to the, the soap. It's kind of like that a little bit with the paint. So in a way, you might as well just spend the extra couple bucks and buy the better quality paint because then you're getting more pigment and you're paying for less water. Now it is, acrylic paints are water-based, so there is some water mixed into there. There is just not a lot with thick body ones. Um, now, do you notice the marks I'm getting? I am turning my brush. You can do the X method, which is cool, but I'm just really swiping it and eat, and I'm going back and forth in different, um, different ways. And notice that I don't, I'm, my main goal with how I'm doing this is I'm not covering up all the white, or I'm trying to cover up all the white areas and I'm not really going back into other areas. The only time I might go back and re-swoosh over um, a blue area is if I notice that all my swooshes are going into one direction, then I will do that. By doing this, I feel that it makes the uh, texture on the background really cool. It gives it like a 3D effect. Uh, now this technique's been around for a couple hundred years, but for me, I started doing this because I love to stargaze. And one day I was outside and I noticed that um, when I was like that there was thickness, it, it appeared to me with the naked eye as though there were thick areas of dark and lighter gray areas of dark when I was stargazing. I'm going to leave this little line here just so that way I'm not pulling in any of my black. So where the black is is still wet. I'm just going to let that be just for now until it dries. Now make sure that with the blue that you don't go into the line of where the shirt is because with the blue you're going to have to cover it up with many other colors. But anyways, if you notice, I mean look at what it's doing right here. It's starting to give some areas where there is where it feels as though there's more thickness of atmosphere and sky than in other areas. This is also a good technique if you were doing, like if you wanted to show stucco, like how like the side of the wall, it's got like texture to it. It's coming out really nicely. I'm liking this painting. I had a moment when I was painting that I was like, ooh, I'm making her shoulders too big. But I think it's okay with the flowers, with the headdress that she has on. I think it is just fine. It looks great and perfect and it'll balance out. But other than that, I'm really liking it. I love how I did the face. You're doing good. This part of the painting should be the most relaxing and easiest part. They don't really think about it, just let it happen. The way that these swooshes happen, let them be, and it'll come out really cool. Now, if you wanted to up the ante with this one, you totally could use a second and a third color and do like a fade within the swoosh making. Now, I'm gonna keep my background just one color solely because I really want the the uh, the flowers to stand out a whole bunch and to really just be extra. And so by uh, doing this, I'm really, the flowers are just, they're going to be wow. And they're going to be more going on. And, and having the paint like textured like this with these, it's almost like little squares in all different directions. I am using a square brush for this. It makes it a lot easier to get the square look. You could use a round with it. Um, it would just be a little bit of a more rounder look versus a square look. But make sure that your square is going all different directions. 
and go ahead and make your background whatever color you want to make it whatever color like so if like in your house if you're like the design is yellow the like your color palette your color scheme in the house i would i usually try to make my backgrounds mimic my color palette in paintings and yeah i also do light blue i use a lot of blue um i i live in pennsylvania and i still am really into the beach a lot so my house is the theme of ocean and so like the pictures on the walls and the things it's got that motif so blue for me seems to work out really nice um i also am a professional artist is what i do full time and i have noticed in my statistics i keep notes and everything that i do and I've noticed that when I'm hanging art in a gallery, the pieces that tend to sell quickly and the most often have a lot of blues in them. That color seems to appeal to a lot of people. Um, that's my statistics. I mean, I also do enjoy the color. I like all the co co colors, really. But like purple for me, I like that color. My logo is purple. I feel like it stands out. Not many people do in the purple out there with like the logos. It's coming along. She's happening slowly but surely. It's also kind of therapeutic a little bit. Like I'm going to be quiet for a second and I just want you to listen, listen to the brush strokes and like it's very therapeutic. Like it makes me feel at ease and peaceful and calm like it's a what they call it a white noise so I don't know let's let's do a let's take an exercise for a minute let's do like a I'm gonna do it for maybe I don't know let's do like five minutes and let's do like a mindful meditation in which we're doing this but yet we're still calm peaceful quiet so turn off your phone turn off your distractions and the whole point is just to be quiet peaceful and I mean, if you'd like to pray, go ahead and pray. If you just quiet and take a break from distractions in the world for just a couple of minutes and listen to the brush stroke and just try to, with each stroke, I want you to imagine all your stresses going away. Just let it be, okay? Let the brush take your stresses and take all your stresses and melt them away. Okay, so on your mark, get set, go.
checking in. How are you doing? How's the meditation? You feeling better? Remember, calm your monkey mind. Let the brush do its work. Relax and zone out. Okay, so now that I'm getting close to the neck, I want to keep in mind that I'm going to do another bone here. So don't paint where there would be a bone. I'm 
I'm going to come up a little bit on both sides of the face because there are flowers draping over. So it just gives it a little bit of a personality. It's a good time to also sculpt out the face just a little bit. Get those angles you want. Remember, we want an oval coming down to a point. My point, the point of the chin is over here. It's a little off center because she's turning her head ever so slightly. I'm choosing to come up a little bit more on this side of the face, just so that way I'm not at the same length here. I wanna go a little bit higher so I can have a difference between the left side and the right side. The less symmetrical that you make something, like for example a rose, the more beautiful it's going to turn out and the better effect you're going to get. And it'll just, the end result will be so much, so much better and less cartoony by making things not match and be a little bit imperfect. Uh-oh, I got black on my brush. I don't want to do that. I'm going to wipe it off. Yeah, the black on my shirt is still really super wet. I like this. This is coming out nicely. It was what I had envisioned. This was in my mind. I like what I see. I hope you like what you see. Make sure I'm all lined up in the camera. Yes, very pretty. Let's see, I feel that we can move on from here and do a little bit more. But before we do that, I wanna go ahead and get my hair dryer out and dry what I have. So that way when I'm painting on little designs, I don't accidentally smear the color all over the canvas. So go ahead and dry your painting.
nice. I like it. You'll know that your paint is completely dry when it is no longer shiny. Now it's not going to pick up so well on the camera, but I can see here now I'm looking at it. I can see some areas where there is quite a bit of shine, not so much in the blue right now because I kind of did it thinner. I caked it on over here. So I'm going to go ahead and try not to touch this area and I'm going to work on the hair. Now I have this whole thing that when I start a painting, I try to finish it within that day. So like two, three hours and it's done. Otherwise, if I don't do that, oftentimes I find myself never finishing a painting. So one way, excuse me, I'm taking out some paint from my the tube of paint here. I'm to the end of the tube. Now I added some brown onto my palette. One of the ways that I can combat not, not finishing a painting and getting it done is by jumping back and forth as it's drying to do different areas. Sounds silly, I know. But really, truly, just having that and going, doing that method helps me. Get all these little simple things and the things I tell myself to do, they help me out a lot. <laughs> okay, so let's see. I'm going to go over here and make sure you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to be working on the head for a minute. Okay, so I got the brown. Now, oftentimes when I do the, do a person, a human a thing, I try to make it look as though it's me. I try to, you know, unless if somebody is commissioning me, commissioning me and paying me to do a portrait of them, typically the portraits tend to be me. So I'm going to try to do this. And... My dad is uh, German and my mom is Mexican. She was born in Mexico City and my dad was born in Brunswick, Germany. I'm American. I was born here. I was born in Utah. They met in college. So um, anyways, my hair is like, I don't know if you can see right there. It's a little brown. I got it dyed a little bit on the ends there, but it's a light brown. So because I'm trying to paint me, I'm going to go with this color. Now you can go with a blonde color, you can go with, you know, whatever color hair, uh, you can make it funky and do purple. Like I, uh, I have some purple dye that I was going to put in my hair just to be fun and different. Uh, I've, I had purple once when I was little and I thought it would be fun to do it again. Um, so, you know, whatever hair color. Now I'm, remember how we were thinking about the face like an oval and the point of the oval is down and this is round. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to be very vertical with my stripes because one of the things with painting hair is that if you leave those, those lines in there of where the hair, the way, if you paint in the direction that the hair is going in, you get these like marks within the paint and they start appearing like strands and it looks really cool. So... You can take the method, like what I'm kind of doing right now, is I'm just sort of caking on the paint. As soon as I have it really close, I'm working kind of fast, but as soon as I have a nice coat of paint on there, I'll go back, like right now, I'll go back and I'll kind of redo those brush marks to make them look super cool. And I work on it back and forth many times until finally I got like some brush strokes that I like. And then just leave it at that. Less is more. Now you could go back in with like highlights and all that, but I feel that doing this method and allowing the brush strokes to be there really helps a lot. It helps the look to just, you know, it's less work and it lets the eye do some work when the person is viewing the painting. Gives their eye a little bit of a challenge. So I'm kind of going up. Now notice that when I'm painting this, I am being very super jagged with my lines. I have a flower that I would like to put here. I pre-drew out the flower. And if you haven't pre-drawn out the flower, don't worry about it. Just think, okay, well, we're going to put a flower right there. So, you know, just keep that in your brain when you're doing the hair. And just don't paint over it. Um... You can paint over it if you want to. Now, if you do that, what happens is you're going to need to wait for it to dry completely. And then also the other thing that's going to happen is that if you have a dark color and you're going over it with a lighter color, 
uh, with the acrylics, you're going to have to need to do a couple different layers and really cake on the paint a little bit to cover up that darker color that you had originally put in there. So in order to sell, save myself some extra work and some drama, I'm just going to not paint where the flowers are. That's why I pre kind of had just the basic idea of where they are going. And when you are drawing uh, onto your canvas to give yourself a road map as to where you're going to put the paint, uh, don't put a lot of detail into your sketch in the sense that it doesn't need to look super awesome and perfect. When I am sketching on my canvas, my main goal is just to have a basic, basic outline idea. Okay, the very basic, minimal that I can have. And then I'm going to let when I paint, my paint's going to do the work to make it wow and cool and everything like that. But right now, I'm just kind of letting this be what it is, you know? Let it happen. So I gave myself a little crown. Now the bottom, I tried really hard to follow the line around. I'm going to have to go in with paint and make that a little bit more edgy. But you get the basic idea. I was going vertical up and down and then towards these I kind of went to the side a little bit and a little bit to the side. Not so much, just a little. Just to say I'm there because I'm envisioning that the house is up, the hair is up in a bun. So that's the direction in which it would go. So I must think about it like a crooked crown. Okay, so that's looking good. I'm going to let that be there for a minute. Now we can work on some flowers. I do want to give that a moment to dry. Let's see, we can work on the face. We can work on, let's work on this area. Yeah, let's do this while we're waiting for that to dry and then we'll go back to here and then back to here. How about that? We'll bounce around a little bit. Okay, so now the base. Now in the photograph, it's a black and it's got stitching. Now I'm trying to make this less. I'm not, I want all the details, but I still want to be easy on myself so I'm not having like a hard time, you know, like, ah, I can't do this, right? So I'm going to omit details just to make it a little bit more simple. So I'm going to put some red onto my palette. Now, if you notice that I'm only taking a little bit of paint out at a time, that's so that my paint stays moist. I'm making sure that every time I take it out of my tubes and my jars and stuff that I close them so that they'll stay moister longer within their containers. Now, if you have oil paints, which means that there's oil added in with the pigment versus water, acrylic paints have water as a base where oil paints have oil. The oil will stay moister longer, which can be really cool and is very advisable when you're doing paintings in which you want to blend a lot and it's gonna take you a long time. I don't want to do that because I'm really working over here with impressionism, so that's why I have the acrylic paint. So here, let's just slap on some paint in this area and I'm gonna make it all marky too, just like that background. Just like how I did here, except for these marks, I'm going to make them a little bit longer. So that way they can have a different kind of identity to the other paint that's in the background. So it's the same basic idea, just I'm making my strokes longer. Okay, let's cake on some color. Let's get that color line really nice and pretty. Okay, so now I caked it on. Now I'm going to come back and kind of destroy it a little bit. Now, in order to get those strokes, you kind of got to work fast before it dries so you can really get those strokes in there. Really get it looking cool. Now, if you go into the black, that's kind of okay because the black is really powering. Once it dries, we can go back over it and make the line sharp again. Just really want to work on the getting those brush strokes in there. I would recommend making sure that also that your shirt is completely 
dry when you're doing this so that way you're not like pulling in that black color because then what happens is if you're going to make your red darker and I kind of want mine to be really bright. I want a lot of brightness going on. Yeah, I'm liking that. That's, that's looking good. We're going to come back over with some stitching and everything. I'm just going to let it dry before we do that. All the, yeah. So I'm going to... That's another reason why I prefer to use acrylic paints because, you know, sometimes I do just want to get on to the next step. That's looking good. I like it. That's working. I'm being careful not to go into the blue. The black is okay. And even if it's kind of wet, I could wipe off a little bit, like right here. Okay, now let's do that to the other side. Now remember when we made it wavy on purpose? So right now I'm just gonna cake on some color. And then after I get all that color on there, I'm going to go and make those marks. I'm thinking the red was a good choice. Now it's she's not it's not red. She has red stitching in there in the in the picture. But yeah, I still feel that red was a good choice for the popping of the color and it just it's working. The Katrina is like you could go muted tones and be Tim Burton-y style with it, but really from what I've seen I feel as though when I've seen them, like they're bright and they're colorful, they're full of life. It's a, it's like a juxtaposition concept, like ironic and different. And she's like, okay, so this girl is alive, but yet she's wearing makeup as though she's dead. And so it's life and death. And the original Katrina, when she was originally painted, Oh, I don't remember the exact date. I want to say it was like 1911. I want to say it was like 1909, 1914. Now, you know what? It was like two years after the Titanic, I think. But anyways, when she was first painted, it's the idea of the death. But then on her hat, she has the flowers. So the life and the death being close together. So that's why I'm trying to do that look and the vibrancy of the colors is really going to show that idea of life. In a way, having these brush strokes will also kind of trick the eye a little bit to want to think that there's a lot going on with the pattern. I like it. It's working working slowly but surely and cake a little paint there kind of had a boob over here with some black on in there but i do want to keep the size and the shape that works i like it she's cute yeah time to move on sometimes i feel like we can fuss with things a little bit longer than we need to and yeah i'm gonna move on so how about we do some flowers while we wait for the red part to dry? Sounds good. We, let's do flowers in all different cool ways. Now I am going to do some sunflowers here with the head. Uh, if it's easier for you because this is all super wet, go ahead and turn your painting. Uh, so then we can, you know, which I think I will just shortly here when I start working on this. Um, I have an idea. Okay, so I put a leaf here. It's a leaf here. I got another leaf here, and I want to make an executive decision on my painting and flip the leaf, I'm thinking. I don't know. I mean, I'll think about it. Because they're all, like, going the same direction, which is cute, and that's really awesome, but I'm just not feeling it right now. I feel like I want my leaf to go in the other way, which just means I'm going to have to make the flower bigger. Okay, so I want to think the basic ideas. Now, I am choosing to make my leaves uh, green 
because I want them to be like they're still like they had just gotten plucked off the tree off the plant they're still good so I've got green leaves right here and then she's all dead so I want these flowers to look really lush and beautiful now I'm gonna do a sunflower and a sunflower and probably another one and some roses so just I'm just talking to myself and thinking about okay what flower is going to be what where are they going to go and well let's go okay so since i have red on my palette right now i'm just going to go ahead and take a moment and use red just solely because i already have red and that's all the reason use the paint i got now i'm going to add some white now I prefer when I add the white that I like to add it to the middle of my palette on purpose because then it gives me space for mixing and whatnot. I'm most likely I'm going to need more white than that, but I'm going to add it a little bit at a time. I'm going to go, let's see, I'm going to use my little Filbert Bright again because I feel like I get detail out of it. I'm going to use a small brush. Round brush is a good idea to do for this. And the filbert's kind of close to that. So let's go ahead. Now let's see. This is going to be sunflower. This will be sunflower. This can be a fun yellow one. Or we can make that a red one. Let's make this guy. I want to think about what my flowers are going to be when they're like far away. So I want to do the stuff that's behind first. And then after I bring it forward. So I'm going to go ahead, cake on some red. And remember, I'm changing the outline because I don't like how this leaf is pointing. I want to point in the other direction. So I'm going over here and I'm caking on, just moving some red. And notice that I'm going around. Around. I'm making like little commas. All the way around. Little commas. Okay, so I like what I got. Maybe we'd add a little bit more here. I have to really cake it on when it goes over that blue. And put some more over here. Now I'm going to go and take my brush and dab it into the white and make swooshes. Swooshes. Little swooshes. Little commas. Okay, don't stress out. Painting is just a series of swooshes. So, it's going to start creating kind of a pink. And I go around and make little swooshes, and everything is like a little comma, and it's going around the center, all these little areas. A little too much pink, so I'm going to go back in here with the red and just kind of try to really cake it on and get areas where there's more red. Now your flowers aren't going to be all at once, okay? They take a moment. So I'm going to let that dry. I'm probably going to go back over it one more time with some more red. But I'm going to let that dry for a minute. Because what happens is if I keep adding red to that, I'm just going to make what's considered mud. Where you're just back and forth, back and forth with the color. And I want to have a lot of distinction between the pink, white, and the red. So I'm going to give that a minute to dry. While that's drying, I'm going to do the same thing with a different flower. I was thinking maybe this one would be cool to be red. So I'm going to cake it on. Some of my paint has mixed into the, into the palette. That's okay. Uh, because of that, I'm going to continue with my little circles. My little comma swooshes. And remember that this leaf goes here, so I kind of want to stay true to where the leaf would be. Because then I'll have to really paint over it, you know. So we're caking on the color, color in this whole area with red. I'm doing little commas, and the inside bump of the comma faces the inside of the flower. To the center of the flower. So I'm pretty much just trying to cover up all the areas of what I see. Now 
Okay, so I got a nice little coating of red. I'm gonna go in with the white and add swooshes. Now you're gonna have to keep continuing to add white every so many swooshes, so that way you still get the true pigment of white. Otherwise it's gonna mix too much, and I do want mixing. Like I'm totally into mixing. I don't want a whole lot of mixing. I still want to be able to see differences between the white and the red. Now they don't look like flowers yet, but they will. We're going to work it. Okay? It's like losing weight. It doesn't happen in one session of exercising. It happens in several many sections, uh, sessions of exercising. And that's how our flowers are going to work. Because it'll come. We're going to build it. If you build it, they will come. So that's what we're doing. Okay, so I've got two red ones. Let's see. So, dot, dot, dot. Where else could we add one that would be super cool? How about we do this one? She might be cute, right? I like to do art in threes and have everything look like like in triangles, so that the eye is moved around. So right now, one, two, three focal points, one, two, three. The focal points, it moves our eye around. So see how I'm doing? See like that, just a comma. See these? Commas. Just a series of commas that are indented towards the middle. I'm caking on the paint, just covering up the area. And I'm doing them little swooshes, so I'm not Every time I lay the brush down onto the palette, oh, be careful with the head. I kind of, yeah, I'm going to, I want to try to, so that way I'm different from this side of the face is different from that. I'm going to be really careful with this line over here and try to really get in there, you know, let that be a smooth line just so it's different from the other side of the face. Now, even though I'm still working with the color red, the paint is the push and pull technique. So it's like, just like how I did with the background, I have all those brush strokes. By doing these little commas, because it's the same basic idea, I'm kind of, yeah, it's happening. You know, like I see those brush strokes, they're occurring. So then they help with the idea of the petal. I like it. I'm going to add some white in there. And you know what? I think I might just borrow because I kind of caked on some paint there. I think I'm just going to borrow from this rose. Borrow some paint and some color. You don't have to borrow. I mean, it's just I'm, I had so much paint, it's going to take forever to dry. There we get the swooshes back going in there. She's kind of turning pink. Let's turn them pink. I'm going to go back into some white over here. Let's see, where could I get some white going on just to get diversity? I'm going to go in here and just kind of play around a little bit with my, with my swooshes. Okay. Remember to keep that side of the roses a little bumpy because that's what they are. They're bumpy. Each one of these bumps is a little petal. Okay, that's good for now. I'm going to let that be. Let's see. I'm thinking we can go and work on some 
Hmm, everything's like connected to everything else and everything's what? Hmm, you know what? While we wait for the roses to dry, I am going to do some sunflowers. And so while we wait for that to dry, because I'm going to go back in with some more colors, but I want to dry all the way so I have less mixing on the canvas. I'm going to go ahead and work on these bones a little bit and do some little more contouring and structuring of a face. This area is still very much wet. So I'm gonna go ahead and I have white and I turn my palette so I'm not digging into the red area. I'm gonna I need a I'm gonna get out a liner brush so I can have more pinpoint accurate details. The liner brush is gonna help me out a lot. Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay. I got a little tinier, prettier guy over here. Oh, and you know, another color I want to add is I'm going to do a little bit of gray. So uh, makeup is when I was at school at the university, I took a, ma a costume construction and makeup class. So like for one semester, we did costumes the next semester. We did makeup, stage makeup, like for being in front of a camera and just being on stage. And I feel that if you have those skills of the makeup, and you've gone through that, this process of what I'm going to explain here and the shadows and all that and the highlights going to be so much easier. Okay, so I'm making this like it's sticking out. So these two areas in the middle are sticking out, which means this sides are kind of sunken in a little bit. So I'm going to use some gray. Oh, oh, geez. Don't do that. See what happened? I accidentally put my... um. I accidentally put my hand down on it and I got paint and that would be a bad idea because then smear it everywhere. So I had to be very careful and I'm going to go in here. Let me see. I'm going to make sure. Let me line up my painting. Make sure you can see it really nicely. Okay, there. So I'm going to go ahead and give her a little bit of a shadow here. And then where else? It would be on the other side as well. A little bit of a shadow. So as you know earlier, um, if you're having a hard time when you're like painting faces and you're just, it's you're stressing out over it, um, a good resource is to watch makeup tutorials and to get a grasp and like on how and why and the products and why they would put the highlights where they put them versus the low lights. Like uh, Kim Kardashian has quite a few um, videos online and YouTube that explain about contouring and using different shades of foundation to get desired looks. And uh, she tends to try to do uh, her look that she's trying to achieve is the natural non-makeup look, even though it's like an insane amount of makeup. That's like her makeup line. That's what they're trying to go for. They're not trying to go for like the 80s vibe of just like, it's purple. She's trying to make it look as though that's just flesh tone and skin tone. So I'd recommend checking out some of those videos. And she explains about like the how to make the nose appear smaller uh, or wider if you need it or like different things like that. Um, those are good things like as a study tool or reference, like things like that. Um, like earlier when I was saying about learning anatomy, you don't really need to know the names or anything of, of the bones. It does help. But like just knowing the basics, okay, well, this is where that goes and. And shadows and highlights will just help you out so much better. You'll have a easier time. I'm going to take my gray and I'm going to mix a lighter gray. I'm going to come in here with some white and I'm going to see if I can lighten this gray up a little bit. And I'm kind of going to do a fade over here. Make sure I have plenty of what I'm going to need.
I'm going to come over here, do a lighter gray, almost like trying to like a step down to the white area of where the face would be. Now remember, we want the left side to be different than the right side. We want everything to have its own unique little look to it, that it's its own specialness. That's cool there. I'm going to leave that for a minute and continue. I'm going to use this color, and I'm going to go ahead and fill in the teeth. Because if I just left everything white, what's going to happen is that there's no contour, there's no special oomph of the face or anything. I'm making sure that each tooth has its own little personality, it has its own little way about being a tooth. Oh, oh, geez, I went into the dark color. I didn't want that. I want the lighter color. Yep, each tooth has a personality. Remember how earlier we tried to make some of these teeth a little jagged on purpose? Now I suffered through braces for three years. I even had headgear. I had the whole shebang. You know the headgear did absolutely nothing. I felt like it was a sham. But anyways, I did the braces, and even after all that, and I've never to this day had a cavity, but yet when I look in the mirror and I see myself, I see where my teeth, yeah, they, there's some spots in there that could be, you know, a little corrected maybe. It happens. Let's see if I can do a little blend here. So, remember what I said, a rose is not perfect because it's all unsymmetrical but in its unsymmet uh, not being symmetrical it's totally cool and symmetrical right it's the the beauty in the chaos okay so i've got that tooth color i'm gonna go in here with some shadow on the chin right here do a little chin Really could come around here. Kind of need to have that different gray up against the teeth. Otherwise, if I use the same shade of gray, the teeth are just going to blend in and I, it, it's not going to work out for what I need it to work out for. Okay, so now I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm just going to go back in with some lighter air, the, the gray and put it where the chin is. Did you see that highlight? I'm going to blend right here. 
little blendy blendiness. along. I'm going to wash my brush, go into some white paint. Gonna, now I have red mixed in here so I just want to make sure that when I pick up the paint I'm picking it in a good spot where I don't have the influence of the other colors. Now I'm going to add white here to the middle part, or I mean the white. I'm going to come down and just gonna blend a little bit. Okay, now the bridge of the nose is going to be white. It's a little highlight right there. Going to come around the eye here. Now the canvas is white. I get it. But what happens is by adding this white, what's going to happen is that over time, it's almost like it protects the paint, like the canvas from like yellowing and it just, it's like a coating. Uh, on paintings that I'm super happy with and I love, um, I go ahead and do a varnish on top. I find that using a spray can varnish for me is, uh, works the easiest. Um, and it's really kind of the least expensive at the store right now let it dry for a whole entire 24 hours if it's acrylic if it's oils before you varnish uh wait three months i mean you don't have to but that's what i was told at the university and when i did work with oils that's what i did and i i had a good experience waiting three months before i varnished so yeah that's why i think acrylics are better just wait 24 hours and that'll be good. Now you don't need to varnish, but if the painting is going to be hung in a location, like you really like it, you want to keep it for a whole long time, and it's going to be hung in an area in which there's a lot of smoke, like smoking, or there's moisture, then varnishing the painting really protects it, especially these white areas, so that they don't turn like... If this painting is hung in an environment in which there is a lot of nicotine in the air, what happens is the canvas will yellow over time. And, you know, it'll make her look more dead, I guess. But she, I want her to look like she's wearing white makeup, not yellow makeup. Go ahead and straighten out that little edge there. Okay, that's good. I like that. Let's see, I think the cheekbones. The cheekbones are definitely raised over here because we have that sunken in area. Now remember how I put a crack in the face earlier? I want to be mindful of that crack. Now if I accidentally paint over it and I don't like what I painted or like my eye, if I, it's not the shape I want anymore, uh, I recommend completely waiting for the white to dry fully. And then once the white has dried fully, then apply uh, the, neck, the the black to be able to reshape what you had. But if you don't, you're going to get gray. And like, I want a really sharp, because this is like the cheekbone and it sticks up, I really want it to be really bright. I'm going to do the same with this cheekbone. Okay, now I feel like we need to start doing a little bit more contouring. I don't feel like I have quite enough contouring at the moment. So let's go ahead and do that. Get this little angle right here just so I can get some fresh paint. Layer of paint right there. Okay, good. I got that white. Okay, so now the nose. Oh, wait. I got some white. I'm going to go ahead and 
put some white over here because I'm going to go into darker color for the nose just since I already have this on here, let it blend a little bit for the chin. Remember her face is a little bit rounded, it's like it's off to the side a little bit. Okay, so let's go back in with some contouring. I'm gonna mix that in with this lighter gray. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that dark gray so I can go around the edge of the nose and make like a shadow. Now the light is hitting her in my mind from up high, from like her forehead down. So because of that, there's, I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow under here, under the nose. I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm gonna bring this, this line up a little bit. I'm gonna do a little bit of sense of height, heightened reality so that I can see the nose and where it's at. Okay, I'm liking that. Okay. I'm going to wipe my brush off and go back in with the lighter gray. And I'm going to do a shadow on the nose. With the lighter gray, I'm going to come in here, lighten up this area and kind of blend it and fade it into that white. It's going to be small on the left. And the nose is going to appear to be larger on the right because her head is tilted and turned. Yeah. Okay. It's coming. Um, let's see. I want to do a little bit of white over here just so I can have some down. Try, I want to cover all of her face with paint. Got some mixed a little bit there. All right, okay, so now I have a lot of paint everywhere. I'm, I wipe my brush off, and now I'm just going to go back and do a blend. Just like if you were to add foundation onto your face, and then you take the, the little sponge and you blend it. It's kind of what I'm doing there. Could probably add a little bit of more white down the middle. Blend, blend, blend. Now remember, the more you take the time and you blend, the more you're going to start getting this look of um, being a photograph. The less time you spend, the more modernistic your painting will start appearing. So it's up to you, your style, how you, how you do things. And uh, there's no wrong answer. Just have fun. It's a wrong answer if you don't have fun and you're not enjoying it. That's a wrong answer. Now her chin is really, really super dark. I feel like some areas of the facing to lighten up just a little bit more darkened so that way I can make sense of her chin. I'm gonna go ahead with some a little bit of dark color. I did have her cheekbones, but I'm gonna add a little bit of dark just to give some kind of personality. A little personality, let it blend a little bit. Just a little bit. Sometimes you have to wipe off the brush and then come back so you can get some more blending. Try not to have really sharp edges, trying to have like lots of fades going on all over the place. I feel like the more fades you got going on, the better this painting turns out. Okay. 
it's working, it's coming, it's happening. I'm gonna go ahead and put some dark over here. Oh, you know what? I think I want to lighten it. I'm changing my mind. I just did it, and now I think in the moment, because it's the jawbone, I'm gonna lighten up the jaw area. So I have the dark. I'm gonna go back in with some white. Kind of caked it on. Mix, mix, mix. Lighten up that area a lot. Now I have gone into the black a little. That's okay because I'm going to go back when I'm done with all this and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to redo the black areas of the face to really make them stand out and be sharp. So you got the jaw, lightening up everything. I feel like it got too dark. Yeah. Which I could add some little darkness up here and a little bit here, just to give it a little bit of a, yeah, whole area of dark. Don't want her to look like she has a beard. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry for a minute. I'm gonna add some more layers and stuff, but if I let it dry right now, when I go to add the more layers, it'll really lighten this area up a little bit more. Yeah. I'm gonna add just a little bit of dark right up here so I can try to balance it out so she's not looking like a, she has a beard. Okay, so I applied the darker color. So now, since so after I applied it, what I'm gonna go in and blend. It'll happen. You just gotta be patient. Okay, I'm gonna let that be for a minute. Let it dry. All this for me is still wet, but I do want to paint in the vertebrae. I'm gonna go ahead and wash my brush. Wipe out all the moisture. I'm gonna go in with my white and cover it up. Um, I kind of want these to be bright and then I want them to be dark around their edges. So I'm gonna go ahead, like right here. Oh, oh geez, I accidentally got some red on that. I picked up some red. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and well, what I recommend to do, you can just leave them straight white if you want. I am gonna give some shading. So I am going to paint, I got red, I don't want red. I'm gonna paint these all white and then go back in and put gray in the center so here's another spot in the painting, which I think would be really awesome to do for some mental awareness and strengthening is that we take a moment and just meditate and be happy and present and just listen to the brush strokes of the painting. So I'm going to be quiet for a few minutes. Go ahead and cover all of these in white. And then after that, uh, you're going to see me pick up some gray, and I'm just going to do the outline edges. I'll see you in a few minutes.
Okay, so I'm thinking to myself, before I do those lines, I would really like for the paint to dry. So I'm going to take out my hair dryer and dry what I have. To a problem. I caked on the paint a whole bunch and it's going to take a million hours to dry. That's okay though. While I'm waiting for it to dry, I'm going to go ahead and do the stitch work of the shirt. Now I'm going to go with my little liner brush and I'm going to make little, little dashes. Now I'm going to try to make sure that all my dashes are kind of Oh, geez, I go. See, it happened to me again. I keep having these boobas where I get the paint on my hands. Don't want to wipe it on my paint it, my painting anywhere. Okay, so you know what? I need more white. There we go. I'm going to use my little liner brush and I'm going to make a series of swooshes. Now, I want my swooshes to. Be very uniformed with how they are, but at the same time, if they're not super perfect, that's going to make it look extra handmade and sewn by hand. And that's what I want. I want, like, the lady that stitched the shirt to be like, she was really good at it, but like, you know, it's handmade. So I wanted to have that look. Oops, the stitches got a little close right there. I'm gonna vary them. like that that looks cute really nice stitch work for the edge of that hem yep okay let's see I'm gonna wash off my brush and now this is a vertebrae for the neck so I'm gonna go back in with some black hair and this is like she added makeup so that way it's showing vertebrae on her neck. So notice how it's just a black triangle. So 
also a moment where I can work on that face just a little bit. Yeah, it works. I don't want to overdo it. I like it. Okay. So how about we make some stitches in here? I'm starting to, this is pretty dry. I have some black spots that aren't, but for the most part, it's pretty dry. So since we already have black in our brush, let's go ahead and make some awesome, cool little designs. I'm going to do the same thing as I did here with the little dashes. I'm just going to Mimic whatever happens on the right happens on the left. So let's make a dashes that go in a circle Just cuz now this is a fun time where you can just make it up and think where did these stitches go? And what's the fun pattern? Just want to make sure that the right side has a loose basic idea to the pattern the right and the left But notice how they're different they're the same, yet different. See, so they're together. So that's cool, I made a circle. Let's see if we do a half circle here. Like it's kind of going up and around to the other side of the shirt. I like that. It's working. I'm going to do a couple here just to keep the pattern going. There we go. That's cool. So now let's change the color. I think part of what makes it so wow is the different colors. Let's add some yellow. We're going to have to really cake on the yellow though for the red because it's going to take a lot of yellow to really cover it up, cover up the red area. I'll wash all my brush, get all the black out so that way we don't make the red, the yellow really dark red. I want it to be a really bright red. So since we did little circles, let's do little centers that are yellow, little dots of stitches that just happen to be little dots in each little circle. Now I'm just kind of making this up. I'm not really going with the photograph. I'm just Letting this happen the way it's happening and just coming up with ideas that I think are fun. So we got, uh, how about we do, hmm, let's see, little X's maybe. Would that be fun? Let's see what we did. We did circles. Let's do some wavy swooshes. Should we do them wavy or just straight? Let's do straight. Little straight swooshes are just stitch marks. All different fun, cool patterns. I like that. Probably add another one down here. Yeah, that's fun. We've got one right here.
fast coil like that. Okay, so now let's say we add some orange just cuz that'll look awesome. Oops. <laughs> I'm running out of paint. Okay, so I washed my brush, got all the yellow off. Now I'm going to work on some orangey areas. Let's see, since we did that, we can make, how about some, just some little dots? Just some little dots. Now the orange does not stand out so much from the red, so I'm not going to do a lot of these. I'm going on either side of the yellow, just making almost like if it was a square where, and I'm putting the dots on the corners of where that square or that rectangle would be. Oh, that's nice. I like that. That's good. So I got yellow and, and orange in here. I thought maybe it would be a good time we could work on a sunflower. The flowers on the head really seem to look like they're doing pretty well and they're really dry. So let's work on some awesome, cool sunflowers. So let's see, where do I want? Let's make this guy a sunflower. I'm going to go in with some orange and work from the out, the inside out. Now I'm going to do a technique that is blending on the canvas. So I'm just pretty much caking on the paint, covering up the white area. And then once I have a little bit of the, the orange, I really like it, it's good. I can come back in with some yellow on my brush and put that down and see how they kind of just blend together. And I'm trying to make sure that my brush strokes are or from the outside in, or from the inside out, so that they're all kind of uniquely together, they're the same. Getting down a base coat of some orange. Now I think the magic in doing these flowers lie in using a lot of paint and really caking on the color. It gives it a very impressionistic look and design. And that is the look that I'm trying to achieve with this painting. So I'm gonna be pretty liberal with adding paint here. Just like I was when we were doing the roses, I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay, now I really want to be careful about the edge of that face because I really would like to keep the, the face looking, the shape that it's looking right now, the edge of that jawline. I'm going to make sure that those brush strokes are going the way I need them to. Okay, so I have a good base coat of orange. I'm going to go back over that with yellow all the way across, but I'm going to give it a minute so it can dry a little bit. So when I'm adding the yellow, it'll really, it'll adhere onto the canvas a lot easier. 
So where else do I want a sunflower? Let's do, let's do this guy. We'll make him a sunflower. I mean, I really should do that. I don't know what color I want this one yet, but I know that I want this one to be a sunflower. So I'm going to do the same thing. It's almost like I'm making a, a comma in both directions. Now, I did teach a class on how to paint pumpkins, and this is kind of the same concept as that. When we were doing it, um, I hope you took that class, because uh, it's basically what we're doing now. It's a good practice for doing sunflowers. So we're making a C going to the right, we're making one going to the left, and it's like I'm going over it a couple of times, and see how it's kind of making commas that seem to be together and then they're like petals individual petals it's pretty much what i'm doing here so one comma wants to bend to the right and then the other comma wants to bend to the left and this flower can go a little bit up into the skull, just a little bit, because it's overlapping. Now in art, when things are overlapping, they're a little bit more visually stimulating. They're more like, ooh, look at that. They just, they trick the eye better. So it's really good to have stuff overlapping all the time. I'm just gonna work all the way around the flower. Taking my time, enjoying it. Now I do understand that this class has taken a long time and and uh, I'm very happy you're sticking it out with me. You're never going to grow and become a better painter if you don't put in the hard work and practice and work on your craft. So you're doing a great job for sticking it out so long. If you feel a little fatigued, that's okay. I'm feeling it too. Like, you know, like... The feeling when you're sitting in front of the computer for so long and you just need to take a break. That's fine. Don't worry. This video is not going anywhere. So, yeah, take a break if you need a break. However, if you do take a break, remember to be honest with yourself so you come back and finish. We've already come so far and it's looking so great. I want to see what the end of your painting looks like. So try to stick it out. Try to get it to the end. I need some more orange. So notice how I haven't really painted the center area. The reason for that is because I'm just going to go over with some brown at the end and that's going to look really cool and so I really don't need to paint any orange there at all. The brown is a very dark color and it's very, uh, very cool color so it's going to be like, it would be easy to cover over the orange but I just don't need to, it's like, it's, it's like an extra step. I'm just kind of making it easy on myself and Letting it be. Now, I didn't, I wasn't particular with the outline. I'm just keeping it open. Oops. Oh, I got a brush stroke there. I want to, I got a mark. But like, so I'm not, I haven't been really super particular to make sure that the line is super perfect. I've been more focused on trying to make each petal look like a petal, be unique and it be its own individual. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and let's make... Hmm, let's make this big guy one too. It's gonna, this one's going to be the biggest of them. He's, I'm going to give him a smaller center just to be more like it's a different type of sunflower maybe or just more visually stimulating. If all of our flowers were identical with each other, then what's going to happen is it's not going to look as visually stimulating and cool. They won't have individuality. It'll be blah. So that way I don't get blah, I'm just going to go ahead and make, make my flowers eat and each unique individuals. Now even in the petals, if you notice these little commas that I'm putting them together and swooshing them and I'm having a lot of brush strokes. 
The more brush strokes I give it, the more definition that these flowers are going to have and personality. And I want each and every petal to have its own unique personality. Now, if you need to change your design, the one you drew of your flowers, it's fine. Just remember, you might need to cake on quite a bit of color to cover up some of those pencil marks. You know, I'm really liking this painting. I really am. I think it's coming out really nice. I'm looking at the face a little bit and it I don't know, I could kind of envision myself that that's what I would look like in this makeup. Do you think if you were to wear this makeup, would this face kind of match your face? Could you, could you say that this is almost like your self-portrait as a Katrina in makeup? That might be cool, huh? I'm having a really hard time here stretching because I'm like sitting way far back. I'm just going to take a quick moment and turn my painting just to make it easier on myself so I'm not straining too much to get to the flower. If you need to do that, go ahead and do the same thing. Make it comfortable and easier on yourself to be able to do this. So when I do these flowers, they don't, they're not beautiful and perfect right in the moment. They take a little bit, like they almost have to grow up a little. So I'm going to come back with some more layers on here and then it's going to really start to get cool. So if right now you're looking at your painting, you're like, what? Don't worry. We're going to, it'll come together. It's almost like, it's almost like we're making a cake, you know, or, or well, no, like we're making a dough. And then we just got to add a little bit of flour at a time until we get to that right consistency for kneading the dough. It's kind of like that with paint, with what we're doing here. We're just a little bit and a little bit and a little bit. And eventually it's going to come together and it's going to be something awesome. But it takes a little bit of work, a little bit of trying and getting her done. So like, don't stress out. Remember, have a good time, enjoy it. Your flowers are gonna look hideous right now, but the more you work it, the cooler your flowers are gonna get. I promise. Just remember to work it and have a good mind and a good attitude about what you're doing and your painting is gonna be super awesome. Now this one, I've chosen to make the circle a little bit to the side. Let me see if I make sure I'm on camera here. So I've chosen to make sure it's on, on the side a little bit because this flower is going to be kind of turned a little bit. So we're seeing half of it. We don't quite see the other half because this rose is kind of on top of it. So the brown is going to be more to the side. So my petals on this side, uh, right now it's going to be on the petals on the left side of the flower are a little bit bigger than those on the right side of the flower. Remember, if it's easier for you so you don't have to strain too much, go ahead and turn your canvas. I turn my canvas all the time. I like turning the canvas. So when I was in school, uh, in, I went to Northern Arizona University, and I had a lot of awesome professors, and we really didn't use easels a whole lot when I was at school. I mean, we used them, but the times in which we would use the easels in the classes were when we were looking at a live subject. So like maybe we had like a person that was modeling or we had something on a table or we were just observing something. Then we used the uh, tables. But usually what we had, we had a classroom and we had um, drafting tables. And so everybody had their own little drafting table. And so because of that, I practice more in that method. So for me, I use easels, 
but only really when I'm trying to be like standing in front of a crowd painting like performance painting and stuff and like if I have a model that I'm observing then yeah but like right now for this method of what I'm doing I I feel more I feel better more comfortable more in control about what I'm doing by just not having the easel uh, the problem though with painting without an easel is that you see it from one you see it just from this angle I'm not looking at it head-on it's like I'm looking at it like right now I'm looking at it in this direction so it's kind of skewed a little bit versus me looking at it straight towards it so that's kind of a thing every so often I do like to get up and look at my painting from across the room I recommend you do that quite often every so often your paintings will get that much cooler okay so I got that so now they're drying it's getting pretty tacky I'm gonna go ahead and use some yellow and really brighten that up and really just get some yellow going on it's gonna happen and I want to make sure that as I'm doing it let me just make sure I'm still in camera here there we go okay so I'm gonna it's gonna make it streaky and I'm going for that I want streaky because those streaks are really gonna give the uh, the definition of the petals so I'm working from the inside out and I'm really trying to think okay where would this petal be how would it work with the relationship of that one and I'm really just caking on this this yellow right now just letting it happen letting it be what it is trying to keep myself from overworking stuff and just letting the paint flow Now the centers of the sunflowers are going to be the last part that I add to the flower. Now I, I don't want to overwork these because if I overwork the yellow on the canvas with, uh, with the, um, the orange and the yellow together, they're just going to blend and I don't want that. I am, per I am trying to go for a streaky kind of a look. So I'm just caking it on and applying. I, I am fixing and adjusting in a couple little areas here and there, but I'm not working, looking, working too hard on it. I'm just letting it be as long as I can still get that, the motion of where the petal would be, some like little outlines in there. That's what I'm pretty happy with. Now this type of flowers are very impressionistic flowers. Impressionism is like when you're painting a painting and it's more like you're, I'm going to clean my brush. I got too much orange in it, but, um, so impressionism is like the idea of it is like, you're not painting what you see, you're painting what you think you see and how you feel that that is. Um, realism is a type of art where you paint to look like it's a photograph and everything is exactly how it is and how it of uh, and how it uses mass within its environment I'm not doing that I think this method is cool I'm really into this now you could go and blend and I could do that that would be cool too but then I'd lose all the streaky effects Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn my canvas just for a minute here to help me so I'm not straining. I need more paint. I might have added a little too much. <laughs> Remember to, you know, 
I need a new paper towel. Every so often, it's good to refresh your water and get new paper towels and stuff and clean out your brushes good, especially when you're uh, doing the method where you're mixing paint with on the canvas. It's a good idea every so often. Okay. Let's see here. So I want to, even though they're overlapping, I know this, but I still want to individuality of those petals. So I'm still doing the same, the same motion where I'm doing the commas, same thing. Really caking it on. See how 3D it's looking by doing that? Instead of just going with just straight orange or just only painting in the yellow, adding these like lines and adding orange areas and yellow areas, it really just makes it more, it, like it makes it pop. I am like not stressing and thinking when I'm doing it, but then I'm also kind of still a little bit thinking in the sense that I'm, I'm trying to imagine, okay, no, here's a petal, there's a petal. Where do these petals exist within the world that they live in? So that they all have uniqueness. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do this one. This is so much fun. It's gonna look really cool. I think when I'm done, I'm gonna put the hang this one up in the living room, right by the front door of the house. When people walk in. Yeah. This one's gonna look really cool on the wall. Okay, so that's about meow. Like that. See, we have other flowers and we have some green leafy things. Hmm. Let's go ahead and do the centers of these sunflowers. Now I know they're wet, but this is how I do the centers to make it super simple and basic and easy and it's gonna look super cool. I am gonna be very careful and I'm gonna go in with that brown that I had for the hair and I'm just gonna cake in the centers with the same brown that I had for the hair and just cake it in. Now I'm not swooshing it, okay? I'm dabbing it up and down. I can tell that my, my paint is kind of gooey and it's been drying. So yeah, don't wipe, just dab. Remember I wanted this one, so that way it's kind of, we're seeing half of the flower a little bit, like on an angle. Yeah. So that's going to take a while to dry, but that's okay. I'm going to dab in the color. Now, most likely I'll probably come back with like a black or a lighter brown or something. We'll see at the end how I feel about it. But for the most part, you could just leave it this way with just the brown. Um, I kind of think if you give it a little bit of an identity that might be a little bit better.
And then if you dab a lot, you get these marks that kind of just naturally occur. That's what I'm trying to do. I feel like I've added too much paint to that, that one. So I'm trying to cover up all the white area. I'm dabbing so I have lots of marks and little dots going on. Lots of personality and brush strokes and marks with those dabs. Oh, oh, got some on my hand. You know, I think I might make this one the picture for my Facebook. This is cool. I like to do that every so often, you know? Like if I paint a picture of that I think could look like me. I'm pretty proud of a painting. I like to do that as my face for Facebook. Yeah. So see how they're naturally little dots? I kind of want that here. I, I caked it on a little bit too much on these ones. Let's see if I can borrow some of the paint. Make the same thing where I have a stipple effect. This is called stippling. There we go, see it's starting to form a little bit. Get those doot doots. You know, really painting is just really a series of swooshes. That's all it is. So don't be scared. Just a series of swooshes, different patterns in the way that you move your brush. I personally don't feel that painting is a talent that you are born with and that you have because I don't know when I was little I wasn't that good I mean I was good but I wasn't like ta-da and like I don't even think I'm ta-da like maybe you know check back with me in 20 years we'll see um I mean even like people like Bob Ross his early stuff was oh, okay that's cute but then his later stuff was like ooh, you know I totally feel like that with my own stuff, that it takes a minute. So don't get hard on yourself if your painting's not looking that great. Because we're all start somewhere, you know? I mean, do you know how many times that I have painted this types of paintings and self-portraits and flowers and just, they looked hideous? It's happened to me a lot. I went through a lot of sad times before I started getting some flowers that came out looking pretty awesome. Yeah, there we go. Looking pretty good. Still feel like she's got a beard going on. Okay, so now finally these things, guys, kind of seem to be like they're kind of drying. That took forever. I totally caked on that paint. Let's go ahead and give them a little bit of definition while we're waiting for the flowers. Remember how I said if you go back and forth, back and forth, save yourself some time. That way you're not like making a five hour painting. Okay, I washed my brush off really good. I'm using the same brush. I'm gonna go back in here. Uh, I'll go with some dark gray, sure. Do the edges, get that in there. And I'm just gonna do the edges. And I'm gonna be very rustic when I do it. I'm not gonna Put in a ton of blend, just enough to, I'm here, because if I do that on these and I blend them and they're super perfectly awesomely bended, you kind of have to do that too with the face, otherwise it throws off the whole motif, and I'm not, I don't want to do that, you know, I want to still keep it painty, I'm not trying to make a photograph over here. And I'm kind of keeping in mind of the edges, but it's okay because I can come back with the liner brush on the black and retouch up those edges. So I'm more concerned with what does the white and the gray look like together. 
this is going to make the bones appear. I painted that one last, so I'm going to give that a minute to dry a little bit more. Um, what was I saying? I got lost my train of thought here. Uh, you kind of want like your your bones to be like the same but yet different and i know i know i keep i'm a broken record here i keep repeating myself but trust me that if you have it super uniformed and super ta-da then it's gonna look like very manufactured and that's i don't think it doesn't look as cool And putting the gray on the edges is going to make these bones appear to be a little bit more 3D. That's going to be super cool. Okay, so I did that. I'm going to go in here. Probably have to mix more. Oh, I kind of turned red. Okay. gonna make some light gray lighter than that yeah I'm gonna try to see if I can get a lighter gray and then I'm gonna go with this lighter gray go back around the edges and kind of smooth it up see what I'm doing kind of add in I'm like yeah I'm kind of kicking it on a little That little bone, I'm gonna worry it. I'm gonna do these ones first and then I'll go back and worry on that one. Lighter gray. Oh, ooh, so I got some of that, that red. Okay. Okay, so now here's where it's gonna come together. I'll get some more clean white. Fresh white, I mean, I mean, yeah, it's good to have some fresh white that doesn't have any other hues mixed in with it. So that way when I go blending, it'll be a lot smoother and a lot more easier. Okay. So I got the white here. I'm going to go back over and really try to play with the colors. And I'm going to work on keeping the white in the middle of these. I'm going to put some straight white in the middle, but then I'm going to go back and like blend. Okay, keep that wide in the middle. Really work on blending those colors out. It's getting very gummy. And really, it's just, you know, take your time and when you finally you feel that your bones are shaded and you, you like what you've got, then it's time to move on. I'm going to need maybe another five minutes and I feel that I should be good with that and they'll be done. Okay, so I added, I added white to all of them. I'm going to wipe off my brush, take a moment and just kind of blend, work it in. Try to get a blendy blend going, lighten up my bones a little.
So now that I have that dark color, what's happening is, yeah, I'm blending and I'm moving that white all over the place, but I'm still seeing that undertone of that gray that I had added. And it's just giving it more of a, with that undertone there, more of a 3D kind of a look. That it's like it's shining through some of the white. I'm going to give that a minute to dry and then I'm going to go back around the edges of the bones and like uh, kind of bring them back to the bone shape that I had them at. Right now I'm just working on the lens. Okay, that's good. I'm liking that. I really should add a little bit of gray. I'm just going to go in with the dark gray here, or the light one, and just kind of get a little touch up on that. But I do kind of want to keep this one so it's not so close. Like, I want to be able to have a difference between, like, a line. I'm going to have to go in with a darker gray so I can see the difference between the bone and the, the, um, the chin. I want to be able to have a little bit of a difference there. Okay, that's looking good. It's looking like the other ones. Okay, I'm going to go in with a little bit, just a tiny bit of gray. Try to get there that to be a shadow right there so it'll stand out from the, the neck bone. Go ahead and blend that out a little. I washed my brush, dried up all the water, and now I'm going back with a clean, dry brush and just rubbing it, trying to get that to blend. Yeah, that's working. I like that blend, that shade. Okay, so let's see. You know what I was thinking? It would be nice to add a couple of blue a little bit of blue here for the what's going on with her shirt so let's go ahead and see i wanted to clear the edges and do like some bumps or i could just outline it with blue how about that i mean some bumps would be great we'll see let's see like Oh yeah, that's nice. How about we just do a quick, a nice little outline, make it easy on ourselves. So like there's, so basically it's almost as if the stitches were so close together that we don't really, um, we don't really see the individualness of the stitches because it's just really good quality work. Isn't that nice? Just really bright colors. Yeah, works really nice and makes that edge really pretty. Make sure I'm still on camera so you can see me here. It really shows up nicely with the background being blue. Make sure I follow it around on the edge. Since I'm here, might as well. Do 
going to work on this one, this, this side over here, doing the same exact thing that I did to that side. nice. I like it. I'm going to go ahead. I like it so much. I'm going to do the other side of the shirt. I really just love how that color pops. You know, we can make some blue flowers. That'd be cool. Problem with that is we did a blue background. So as cool as they would be, they would blend into the background. So if you wanted to make blue flowers, you could do like what with the roses, the same idea, just, you know, blue and white instead of red and white. And that would look really cool. You know, I'm thinking with this blue and the white, it's almost like, it's a Katrina, but she's like, kind of American colors going on here with the red, white, and blue. That kind of was an accident. I didn't really mean to do that, but I'm an American. Yeah, that works. I was born in Utah. Kind of cool, honoring my my heritage. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's like a subtle hint, you know, just a subtle little hint in there. It's not in your face. And it might be reading a little too much into it. Um, I had this teacher that was like, when you do a piece, try to put like a storyline with it. Like what's going on? Who's this character? What's happening? And yeah, that could be a read between the lines type of idea of the color palette of choosing those colors. And then I have all these other colors too. See, that's the whole thing. Like I was born here, but yet the entire side of my mom's family are Mexican, and the majority of all of them still live in Mexico and Veracruz, Mexico City. I have them all over, mostly in the south. South, what, the southeast kind of, I mean, it's really north and south, but you get the picture, right? And then my dad's family are still in Germany. They came over right after, when my dad was one years old, they came over on the boat right after the war. They were trying to hang out, but they tried to regroup. And when they regrouped, the Germans had kicked my family out of their land. They had a farm and they were quite wealthy and had a good, good thing going. And they had the high ground. So they ended up having, there was a battle that occurred there. They ended up using the house, the farm as the hospital. And then they ended up using it as the headquarters during the war. A, a headquarters for a short period of time so 
it got like really demolished and used and bad. And after the war, my grandma was like, yeah, we tried to rebuild, but it was too hard. It was too much. It was too much sadness. So they moved on. So that would be cool. What I'm trying to get at is what I'm saying is when I do paintings like these and I'm trying to tell my story or just, you know, the story, it would be cool if I could somehow do something that would honor both sides of my heritage would be cool, you know? A little bit of extra. Oh, that was cool. Let's see. I'm thinking we could do a ribbon and having a blue ribbon might be really cool. Or a red one. I mean, it was already a lot of red. Or yellow. Yellow might also be cool. I had to think about. Oh, green. We haven't done green yet. We need to add green into here. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so everything's kind of dried. I'm going to take a minute and let's like work on some leaves. Also, do you notice what I'm doing by changing every so often? Like, Sometimes we can get bored being in one little thing, focus on it too much. It's like, ah, next. That's what I'm kind of doing with you right now. We're back and forth, keeping it going, keeping entertained with what we're doing so we don't fall asleep on the job. So I'm going to go with a little bit. I am going to add some dark green onto the palette. Don't need a whole lot, just a little. And then I'm also going to add some bright light green. And I'm going to do pretty much the same basic idea of what I did over here with the sunflowers, except for I'm just changing the shape of what I'm doing. So, you know what, really quickly for a second here, I'm going to take the hair, hair dryer and uh, dry this really quick just for a second. It, it'll help me when I'm painting later with the green. getting a whole lot of color mixing happening okay so I'm gonna go back in I'm still in the same brush that I've been using still with that filbert bright really like those ones okay so I've got the green dark green and I've got a light green I'm gonna go ahead and first add the green here oh do you see how I'm getting a lot of really beautiful brush strokes out of that yeah, I really want that to be a thing. So I'm going to use that dark green and really try to keep them. I want to cake on the color and then try to go back. I want to be careful I'm not covering up those petals, right? Because this plant is kind of behind that one. The leaf is kind of behind the flower over there. So I don't really want to cover up them petals. So cake it on. Cake it on. You can take more liberties and be a little bit easier when it comes to the middle. Just make sure that your lines are really nice. Kind of do want to have that straight line for the edge of the leaf, or leaf really crisp line. Notice how I'm going with the curve of the leaf, trying to really get those brush strokes to be where they need to be. And then this is going to mimic having some veins going on in the leaf. 
That green went up against the yellow just looks so lovely, doesn't it? All right, that's good. Make sure I get my little lines so that they're all kind of cool together. There. So everything's kind of pointed all in the same area. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry and just how I did these flowers, I'm gonna come back with the brighter green. So while I'm letting it dry, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other leaves. So I'm gonna take a moment and do this one. Make sure I get those edges nice and pretty. There we go. That's cool. I like it. So when I did my drawing, yeah, I'm going to fix that right now. I'm going to work on this little leafy guy. You know what? I'm straining way too much. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my canvas so I don't have to stress a whole lot. Make it easy on myself. I'm going to cover all this area. Make this leaf a little bit bigger than I had originally anticipated. These colors are so lovely. I feel like I added too much paint onto my palette. Try not to waste your paint like I do. Okay, so I, I, I caked it on. I'm going to take a quick moment and work on those brush strokes so that they all kind of just come together. Remember, we're doing commas. I mean, this whole painting is pretty much a series of commas and swooshes. There we go. I like that. That works. Okay, now this one. I am going to change the design I had. I'm going to make my... my Leaf go in the opposite direction. Yeah. There we go. It's going to go sideways. So all I have to do is make sure that my brush strokes are going in the direction of how I want my leaf to point. Originally I had a flower here. I'm going to get rid of that flower. Let's put a leaf. This is painting is looking just so lovely. I really like like this color. This is a good shade. Okay. So let's see. I think I've got it good for the leaves. I could pretend like there's another one way back there. I'm going to flower here, flower, flower. Okay, we're going to do other flowers. How about we add some purple flowers? Wouldn't that be cool to do some purple? I love the color purple. Okay, so we should add some of that bright green. 
I'm gonna let it dry just a little bit. And while that dries, I'm gonna come and incorporate some green into what's going on over here. I'm gonna do some stitches. I'm gonna do round ones. Round ones that go around the little side. I'm just making this up, honestly. Put the stitches wherever. I'm making up fun, cool, brown stitches. So wherever you want to put the green, just add the green. Make sure each stitch has its own little personality. So they're roughly the same, but they're kind of different. And the lady that made them, you know, she had a little personality with her, the way she did it. Now you can totally paint this with like a design. I am just doing this to show you an easier way to get the basic idea of the look. So I'm just kind of making it up just to make this part of the painting a lot easier and simpler. I'm going to make sure that I get the ones around on the side. That green and black kind of started looking like they're the exact same color, and I don't like that. Don't like it at all. Mm -mm. So I'm not going to add any more green because it's looking too close to that black. Oh, it's like I'm adding too much. Okay, so I'm going to wash my brush and dry out all the water. And let's go ahead and add uh, the light green. And they're just, you know, we don't have to. We can just let these be what they are. But if we add a little bit of light green, it's really going to just make it pop. Oops, not light enough. Not contrasty enough. I think I'm going to need to add some yellow in there. So all I'm adding are some extra swooshes. Yeah, this was a fail. This color was not a good color, but it's okay. I'm adding more swooshes and just add into what we got. Breaking some of the pattern up a little bit. I'm going to need to let it dry a little bit more, but I think it would be good to come in with some yellow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was a fail. Okay, I can go in here. I have some, like, I'll take some of this green. Let's go into this yellow and lighten it up a lot. Make it way lighter. Little orange kind of mixed in there on accident. It's okay. Let's see if we can lighten it up. I feel like it's still not light enough. Oh well, just to give texture of color, I'm going to do a couple little swooshes of this, just to give a little bit more going on. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to take some of this rest of this white I got over here, see if I can lighten up some a little bit more. I accidentally got some pink in there, turned it gray. I don't want that color. Take some more white over here, see if I can make some lighter, lighter color. This is a really light one. This will stand out, right? The green, ooh, very minty light green, yeah. Swoosh. Let's 
Oops, I accidentally got into the face. I'm going to have to fix that. Swoosh, swoosh. I'm thinking that it would be really awesome if we added some purple flowers. I'm going to go ahead and add some purple. It's kind of a magenta color a little bit, a little bit of a brighter purple. Now I know that our template photo doesn't really have purple in the flowers, but I was just thinking it would be really nice to add them in. So I'm going to go over here and add little strips of purple. I'm just going to kind of add the color to the white area and then I'm going to go after I've kind of added the color everywhere then I'm going to go and fix the lines and make them look really cool so that way it looks like the petals are going off into the side direct side area from away from the scalp now this flower is more just a fun I don't know, it's kind of almost a made up flower, really. Just a bunch of little petals going every little direction. I'm so glad you're painting with me. I'm having a lot of fun today. So yeah, it's just a little like a poof almost like a little pom pommy poof of just a whole bunch of petals that's cool I like that that looks really awesome I'm gonna do the same over here and I'm gonna make this a purpley poof too Remember to keep those brush strokes going so that way it'll be fun and awesome and we can see all the different little petals. I'm trying to make sure that my brush strokes are all going in the same basic direction which is kind of like out from the middle. Mm, that's cute. I really like that. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more here. I want to be very careful that I'm not covering up what I have because I want it to appear as though the purple flower is underneath all of these other flowers. That's great. Very nice. I'm going to go ahead and make this a purple one too. Now this one, I'm going to try to make it circular like this is the middle of the flower. And I'm going to vary my strokes so that they are going out like this. Do you see what I mean? Out from the middle. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the outside petals of the flower and then I'm going to work my way into the flower. This way I'll have a nice overlapping effect that'll occur. So I'm um, for example I'll be right back over here and see how it kind of overlaps the swooshes and makes it appear really 3D when you do that. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I'm going out like a sunburst. So we're seeing these ones, we're seeing the flowers, both of them sideways, and this one we're seeing it from up above. We're seeing into the middle of the flower. It's 
going to come into the hair just a little bit. I'm going to try to keep this flower round. Yeah, that looks really nice. And then my little tiny swooshes are going to be really small right in the middle. That way I can have like a layering effect happening. I'm really liking that a lot. I'm going to go ahead and add some more purple up here. That's really beautiful. Now I do have some area here and I kind of didn't add the purple because then I felt like it would be like a round ball. So I don't know. I'm going to need a minute to think on that one what color I should do. But in the meantime, while well, I'm giving that a think for what color to be here, because you know, I don't want it to look oval. I mean, it could, like there's two flowers, but I don't know. I think. I'd rather change the color. So while I have the purple, let's add some purple into the shirt just cause for fun. You know what we could do? We could make the purple into the, now maybe, well, hmm, the ribbon. The ribbon in our photo is red, but the problem is we already did red here, right? So if I do the ribbon in red, then it's gonna what be, I need something that's gonna stand out nicely. So let's do it. Let's do the ribbon. I'm going to do it in a circle here and another circle, a little loop. Then I'm going to make a big loop here. Big one. I'm going to do another big one. Nope, I don't like it. Mm -mm. I'm going to go ahead and wipe that off and it's okay. I can do that because the paint underneath has completely dried. So I can just go ahead and wipe that. I didn't like the look and go. If, if you just went ahead and did that, go ahead and keep with the purple. If that's the color you've chosen, if not hurry up and wipe it off right away. If the paint underneath is completely wet, just let it be for a minute. Let it completely dry all the way, and then you can go ahead and paint over it and redo it if you want. But it has to be really dry first, otherwise you're just smearing around paint everywhere. I'm really nervous. I'm thinking, you know what, the yellow is probably the best way to go because I think it's going to stand out the most. I have a tiny bit of yellow here that I can get into. I'm going to do a little circle right here. Yeah, see that just stands out so much nicer. So I've got my yellow and I'm going to go over here and make a really long pass. I'm going to do it again over here. It's my little string. Not all these shirts have these strings, but um, I have quite, I have like four right now in my closet that they have little strings here. Well, I have like tassels and stuff, like little skinny, they're really skinny little tiny strings. So I got the two bows. And then let's do a little, like just a 
like we have the bows and then let's do like a little one that's kind of just coming around the tie which kind of if we do one we really probably should do the other side because then it's just going to look odd right so i'm going to make this one be right there There we go. It's looking really lovely. I like that. That's nice. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead, wash my brush. And remember how I said about those bones, I wanted to clear up, clean up the edges just a little bit to make them sharper. I'm going to go ahead and just do that really quickly right now. To give a little bit of definition. Oops, I had too much water. I don't want to really, I don't want it to be fluid. I kind of want the paint to be really thick. So I don't want to add water to the paint. I prefer to paint with thicker paint. Everybody's got a style and really you're not going to really know what your, what your style is until you just practice and you work with the medium and you just take time and think and then after a while you'll You'll figure out what paints and what brands you like the best. I like to experiment, try new things every so often, but for the most part, I've been painting for so long that I pretty much know what companies this and that that I like. And, and really some companies are good for some things and you know, they're so even though I don't maybe paint with a specific type of paint all the time, uh, there could be some moments where this, that kind of paint is what I need. So it really all depends on the moment and what the end result I want, to have the look that I want, and that's usually how I choose what type of paint, whether I'm using oil paints or acrylics, and then also what brand I'm using. I like that. That's cool. kind of opens it up a little. Okay, so let's see. I feel like I just need more going on with her shirt. How about we add some little flowers into the shirt? Little, little flowers. I really think if we added maybe some of this light green, it would be really nice. It would really stand out. I'm going to do little flowers in green. See how that goes. You know how we always do the, the green for stems? Ooh, that's nice. Like a little cross. Yeah. Like a little, like when they did the stitches, they made X's. I like that. That's a good, good idea. This is fun to just kind of experiment and work on new things. I'm really liking this. Just uh, to have fun. And okay. It, and it's like, at the end of the day, it's like, I meant to have that there. It's very freeing. Oh, I like the green. It's this really good, nice pop of color. Let's do... And just add some to the side here. Okay, where else? I mean, I really should do here, but there's not enough space, you know, between. I don't, I kind of, let's do some stitch pattern. How about we do around the circle? Some green going around the circle, just cause. I wish I would have thought of this sooner. It's so beautiful. It's like a running stitch. Oops. 
So remember how I said earlier about giving each little stitch a personality. Oops, you know what? I don't want that one. I want to keep a little space right there. It's okay. It's all dry so I can wipe it off really quick. You really got to get to it quick. If you change your mind and want to erase something and you want to wipe it off, you really got to do it super quick. Okay, that's cool. Let's add some more though. Remember those oranges I added? I don't think they really sh show up that well with it. It's too close to the red. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and over those oranges, I'm just gonna dab on some green because that orange is just not showing up. So almost like these little dabs are, I want to call them barrel stitches, but I know that's wrong. They're, uh, they're not stitches. They're actually pretty, they're pretty quite, they're pretty simple when it comes to sewing to make. You just kind of make a big old knot and then pull it through. Yeah, see, that's much better. And I don't want to go overboard with the green too. Oh, that was a lot. Oh well. It's looking good. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and wash off the brush. You know what we didn't do that I just kind of spaced out? I forgot to do the eyes. I'm gonna go ahead with the liner brush. And I'm going to take some paint and color in the white area of the eye. Now technically I really don't need to do that, but it'll help in the longevity of the painting. It's kind of like a protectant coat over the white area. That looks good. I'm going to add some white here just to lighten up that chin. Yeah, I'm lighten it up a little and blend it in. Kind of a little annoyed with myself just a little bit that I made it so dark down there. But in the contrast kind of nice though, like it really just seems to flow together and gives it a really 3D look and the little bit of dirtiness to the bones like they've been worn and used like they're not just like automatically exposed yeah see that's just really looking nice I like that you know what I should do over here I'm gonna blend this out just a little bit remember when we made this area a little darker I'm gonna take some white and just blend out the the end so I have a nice little fade going on. The more I have fades, the awesomer this painting's going to look. So the goal is to have a lot of fades when it comes to the face. Now there are some times, I've seen some people when they paint Katrina's that they don't, that they make it very like strong and, and really like contrasty. But this one I'm trying to get, make it look more like she's wearing cream makeup. I think I went too far. Okay. Yeah, that's looking great. Okay, so decision time. Decisions. What color? Because we have all the other colors, right? What color? Decisions, decisions. We could do a blue rose. That would be fun. 
a blue rose would be so cute if it would match the background. Just like one random one. Yeah, like super, super random, like. So it's like random and it's there, but it's still kind of like we have an idea. And I'm checking out the reference photo for a second. It's always good to go back and check them up, look at things and get some ideas. I still, I can't make up my mind. I can't. I just, I don't know if blue's gonna like go all the way, right? Ah. Hmm. I don't know. I still, I, I don't know. <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Um, this dry, dried a little bit. So I'm going to go back in with some black here and I'm going to do the irises at the middle part of the eye. You know what? No, mm -mm, not black. I won't do it. No, I'm going to go back in and do some brown because like my eyes are brown. Don't need a lot and just take a tiny bit out. Now, because I did put some of that wet, that black in there, I'm gonna take the hair dryer for a few seconds and kind of dry it. Otherwise, when I put that brown, it's gonna be, they're gonna mix together. with some brown. I'm going to use this small brush and I'm just going to kind of dab it on there with my filbert brush right here. Okay so I washed it, it got it all dry and now let's go ahead and put the brown and this is the same brown that I used for the hair. I feel that for me my eyes are kind of the same color as my hair. I want to take a moment and try to make sure she's not cross-eyed, which could still totally be too cute. I mean, there are people in the world that are just cross-eyed. They have things going on and stuff, but I'm going to, I am not cross-eyed, so try to make sure that I get that really round. And see, now doesn't she really come to life with those eyes? That she seems more alive than dead. If you're going for the totally dead look, maybe not. Don't do this part. Okay, so just stand up, look at it. I feel like I, I mean, it's round. Hmm. Yeah, no, it works. It's good. We're our own worst critics, you know. There's so many times I'm like, eh, no, and then I'm like, oh, okay, but yeah, and then no, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, I was thinking maybe we can just go ahead and pretend it's another leaf. I I think on my painting, I'm just going to make this guy another leaf. Yeah. I think I'm feeling that. So I'm going to go ahead and cover with the dark green. Get a and then after that, I'm going to go in the direction of the way that the leaf would be so that I have the brush strokes. Got a little curve going on here. And I really should let it dry. But I'm going to be brave. I'm going to wipe off my brush. I'm going to go back into this darker green that I had made. I'm going to put some swooshes. Just a couple. A couple swooshes. 
And I'm going to go back in with some lighter green over here. Maybe do one. Oh. Ooh, my paint dries so fast. And just a little bit. I'm going to go back in with this, some dark green. Yeah, there we go. A little bit of blendy blend. There we go. That works. Mm -hmm. I gotta. Don't want to overwork it. Okay. So I'm still waiting for the eyes to dry through a little bit. So that way, when I do the next step, it'll be a little bit easier. But in the meantime, I think that I want to show you a technique so we can make these flowers pop just a little bit more. I'm running out of black, so I'm going to go ahead and put a tiny bit of black on my palette. I'm not going to need a lot, but I feel that this is going to make our flowers just have a little bit more oomph to them. So I'm going to flip my, oops, I got some water. I'm going to make sure I wipe that off so I don't get like a spot. Okay, so for the flowers, I'm going to go ahead and make, like, I'm going to turn my brush and use this side. And dab it in there. And then I'm just going to be very sporadic and just kind of add some dots randomly in the middle. Now you can stay all to the middle of this, the plate, the area if you want, or you can go off to the side. I'm going to have to go back in with some brown there, which overpowered with the black. There we go. I'm going to have to let that dry and go back over with some black, but. Do, 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 lots of do, do's. See how it's just giving it a little bit more character. Just have little random dots. It's a little more oomph. Okay, that's great. Gonna wipe it off. I'm going to try to cake on some brown here just to cover up some of that black. I feel like I added a little too much in that area. Go back in and have a little. There we go. See, so break it up. Okay, so now that I did that, I'm going to go and get my liner brush. I'm going to do a little bit of black in the roses, just a little. Okay, so a swoosh and a swoosh. And I still want the commas, okay? I'm still trying to do commas. Now what this is doing is just giving some extra, extra little shadow. You don't have to do the steps if you don't want to, but I just feel that it really makes the rows come together a little bit more. It's a little more oomph in the rows. Yeah, I'm going to do the same to the other rows. I'm going to turn my painting just really quick for a second so that way I'm not straining when I do this. Now, very sparing, okay? Notice I'm not adding a lot of them. It's just a little bit. Okay, now this is one rose that is in front of the other rose. So I'm going to kind of do it in a way so that I emphasize that, that there are two roses right here. It didn't really work, but kind of. 
kind of, you can kind of see it. It's growing. So they're commas and they go around from where the center of the rose is. Yeah, just like that. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the flowers. I think we've done a really good job. I'm very happy with how my flowers turned out. I hope you're happy with yours. I have this liner brush. I just wanted to go ahead and touch up this little crack that she has in her skull just a little bit. Kind of painted over with that with some white earlier. Just to make that a little pronounced. I think I'm going to might give her a couple extra little cracks just to give her some extra extraness to her. But these are all just little tiny details and things. I'm going to I'm going to fix up her teeth just a little bit and I'm going to do like some black around just to let the teeth kind of stick out a little bit so i'm doing i'm rounding the bottom area of the tooth see it just kind of makes them stand out a little bit more so they're like tiny, tiny little combs. Now these are upside down smiley faces. So their comma is going in the other direction as the ones in the bottom teeth. I'm trying to be very light with my line work here. Less is more. There, I feel like that got some extra oomph. Okay, let's see. Where else could I add a crack? Let's add a crack over here. As though there was a, a boo boo. I just noticed I rubbed into my painting a little bit and the green isn't all the way dry yet. Oh, you know what I'm going to do before I forget? I'm going to add a little dot here. By doing that, it helps kind of like it's a knot and I can kind of see part of that knot. So I'm going to go here and just add a little bit of a, a little bit of a crack right there. Hmm. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and add the tiny center part of the eye right in the middle. I'm going to, for a minute here, I'm just going to get all close, make sure I get this straight. Yeah, just want to make sure that we don't have a cross-eyed lady over here. Now you can go in all details and stuff and make the little lines and everything, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to. I'm just going to let it be, and then the eye is just going to fill it in. I want to make this crack a little bit longer. There, I like that. Oh, I got some green. I'm gonna fill that in right there. And I think this is it. I'm really happy with my painting. I hope you're happy with yours because yeah, we did good today. I, I'm really sorry that this class took a long time to do, but I mean, look at the results. Isn't she just gorgeous? She's beautiful. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. Yeah, so it would be good to like sign the name here. I usually like to sign my name at the back, in the back of the canvas, just cause I feel like it adds an extra element if you don't sign the name. Uh, you know, we could add maybe
is like around these, but I think it's good. Sometimes less is more. And I think this is one of those circumstances where less is more. I mean, I'm looking at what I'm doing here. I possibly could add some more detail. Like remember the, these stitchings? I just think that these stitches are really super cool. And I almost feel like I kind of want to make more of them because I just really like those little guys. I'm going to go ahead. I talked myself into it. See, this happens to me like all the time. Does this happen to you? Like where you're like, oh, but I should try that and I should try this. And, and then before we know it, it's six hours later. <laughs> okay, so I like that. I want to incorporate a little bit more. So what if I incorporated here, the white stitches? And I did like a whoop. Yeah. But I'll make them really big. Yeah, that's cool, right? Uh huh. It brings down the white a little bit. Make sure that I try to. Every stitch has its own personality, but yet they're kind of uniformed in how far they are apart from each other. This is so gonna be my picture on Facebook, like my 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 on my profile, my photo. The I don't know what were they called profile picture. Yeah, I like to change it up every couple of months and do a new kind of picture. Like for summer this year, I had a picture of what an impressionistic picture of me on the beach, as like in the surf of the water. It was all, you know, conservative. I wasn't in like a little bikini or anything, but it looked like I was in the water having a good time. So this is going to be my Halloween picture. See, isn't that cool? And I like how doing that is adding a little bit of white. It's pulling it down. You know, we also could do that would be really cool is to put some stars in the sky because right now it looks like maybe she's up against a, a wall, a blue wall, maybe a stucco wall. We could add some stars in the sky like she's outside. You know, this is my favorite part of painting, when everything starts coming together and it just starts looking awesome. Ooh, that's lovely. Okay, so let's go ahead and add some stars. Now, I'm going to do this method. I've shown you many different methods that I use for stars, but this one, we're just going to dot it. Doop. 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 You got to make the noise. If you don't make the noise, then the magic doesn't work. Doop. Oh, oh, that was a line. Doop. 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 I'm going to make them sparing, but I'm going to make the lines appear kind of like you know, like the right and the left they're, they're they're not like too thick in one area and too shallow in another area so that they just kind of yeah like the less is more concept now if you had for a lesson for a lesson paint this would be really cool to do this that way it would look really cool I need to turn my painting over just really quickly here so I can this little side edges like the wrap it around the canvas there we go thank you so much for hanging out I'm a little sorry this one took forever to paint but Wow, it was just so worth it. I feel like I've had so much like emotional therapy right now. Like I feel like, 
ah, the world is good again and it was nice to have a break from reality and to just hang out and socialize and have a good time. I really, really, really appreciate it. Yeah, like, um, you know, my little time to hang out in the art studio and just paint. So um, if you would like to, I would love to see your painting. Uh, I So I'm all over, like, on all the social media, like, the... I'm on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. I do them all. So can you please post a photo of your painting? So that way, like, they'll send me the message to see it. Like, hashtag. And then that way they're going to, they'll send me, um, they'll send it, like, it'll, it'll show up on my thing and everything so I can see it. Because I really want to see how yours turned out. I want to see if you did a different pattern, how cool your pattern turned out. I'm just super excited. Um, so the last five minutes of when I paint, I take a quick second and I look at everything. And if there's something that I want to change, I go ahead and fix it. And then the rule that I have with myself is once the painting is done, it's done. Because, like, I don't want to keep working on a painting for a million years, you know. I want to continue and evolve and do more art projects and stuff. So... So take a moment, look at what you got, and if you're happy, when you're happy, that's it. On a wall, and it'll be cool. Yeah, yep. This one is totally going in my living room, it's like right by the door, so when people walk in, it's going to be right there on the wall, first thing they see. It's going to be awesome. Tell me also, let me know, I want to see where you're going to hang your painting, like all the cool spots. Tell me all about it. Oh, and if you can... Can you please give me a review on the class to let me know uh, what you thought, what I did good, what I did bad. Like, just let me know how I did so that way I can continue improving and being a better teacher and doing better. So please give me positive, constructive criticism. If it's negative, please say it in a way that will help me so that I can get better um, with what I'm doing. And thank you so much for hanging out. I will see you next time.